And good evening and welcome to another edition of the Big High School Sports Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Online at bullfallsradio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. I'm Chad Holmes and welcome back for another year. Former yeah. Newman Catholic High School head boys basketball coach Jeff Gress. Well, yeah, it's awesome to be back. Glad to be part of this, and I just appreciate you giving me the time to talk. Hopefully my voice makes it through for you. <laughs> I appreciate you making me not talk for two complete hours here. So great to have you back here for the winter sports season as we delve into uh, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls hockey during the winter. And uh, here for our first full, I would say, winter sports show. We had a lot of hockey last uh, last week tonight. We'll talk quite a bit basketball as we have three special guests coming up uh, at 620. Our coach guest for this week, the uh, head coach of the Merrill Blue Jay girls basketball team, Mike DeBoer. He's uh, led his team to a 2-0 start to this season. We'll talk about what's going right at Merrill at 620. We'll talk generally about Wisconsin girls high school basketball then at 640 from Wisports.net, their lead girls basketball writer, Norbert Durst. And then at 7 o'clock, our student athlete guest for this week from Northern Lutheran, senior Mitchell Cross. Uh, he is a all all conference second team performer from a year ago. Uh, fourth season as a varsity player for Northern Lutheran, and he'll be our guest coming up just after seven o'clock. But I thought before we get all to our to our guests, let's start off by talking some girls high school basketball. We'll talk some boys high school basketball as we get into the show as well. But the girls are deeper into the season. They started a week earlier than the boys, and we got plenty of action already to talk about. Starting off with the Wisconsin Valley Conference uh, in action in the past week included the Merrill Blue Jays. They improved to two and zero on the season, defeating Ashland sixty one to sixteen last Thursday. Maya Ott had 23 points. Sophie Wendorf 11 for the Merrill Blue Jays. Uh, for Merrill, 2-0 and start. Again, and I think we're going to talk again. You had a good question for Coach DeBoer a year ago talking about how they put t- together their schedule in terms of trying to get the best seating possible. And the get- It's about winning some basketball games early and they've won by 34 points and now by what, geez, uh, 45 points uh, so far. So a good start for Merrill. Yeah, two convincing uh, uh, non-conference victories right away to start off, and if you're, I guess, if you're looking to build confidence, looking to get your systems in and see what's working and not, it, it worked for them against both Chiocton and, and Ashland uh, in route, route to those two games. And and I know Coach DeBoer, the last time he was in, spoke of Maya Ott very highly and all the things she brings, and you know she's on a tear right away. And and uh, we'll talk about his philosophies in terms of how he does scheduling when he's on later on the show. I want to talk a little bit more about generally some of the uh, teams and what they were able to do in the past week to start off the season, basically. Uh, Other teams involved include Stevens Point. Uh, They lost a couple of games uh, to uh, Fox Valley Association squads uh, last Thursday. They lost to uh, Appleton North 72-50. Adelie Ness, 22. Jada Soybert, 14 for Stevens Point. And then on Monday night, the Panthers fell by two at Appleton West, 50-48. to Soybert had 16 points. Ness, 11. Lindsey Weiler, 11 for Stevens Point. Janelle McCarville, legendary performer for Stevens Point Area Senior High. New head coach, and uh, it's going to take time, I imagine, both for her and for the group of girls uh, to get things going here for Stevens Point, who expected, again, to be among the best teams in the Valley. Well, I was going to bring this up as often as we talk because there's a lot of new coaches. Yeah. If you look on a lot of these conference programs with uh, the boys and girls side, and and that's the thing, you've got to create that identity. Obviously, things can be established. You tweak some of the things that the coach previous to you already had going on that were good things that the program enjoyed and that that worked well for them. But you got to add your own identity there, and it takes some time for the girls to get it. Uh, you know, they're playing those Fox Valley Association teams, which are are good basketball teams. Mm-hmm. They're getting out and testing themselves a little bit before conference, but it, it's going to take a little bit of time to get their feet wet and you can see already some of the girls that you know nest being one of them that they're going to rely on on heavily to, to add that scoring punch but the you know when you look at a player that is in the basketball hall of fame <laughs> was a stud at smash played in the wnba i'm not even i think they wanted did they win a championship mm-hmm. with the links so they're going to get some good coaching and and that ship is going to be right at the correct way with the job that she's going to be able to get done based on her experience. Speaking of uh, games against uh, Fox Valley Association teams, both Wausau West and Marshfield took on Nina. And Nina featuring one of the uh, top players, maybe the top player in the state of Wisconsin, Allie Zabel. Uh, I was over in Nina last Friday night. Wausau West, uh, another new head coach, Shannon Galligan. It was a rough initiation for Coach Galligan and the Warriors. They fell to the Rockets 78-23. Zabel had 24 
54 points, including career point number 2,000 in that game. Kelly Cray, 14 for the Warriors. And then uh, last night, Nina Keem to Central Wisconsin took on uh, the preseason favorite in the WVC, the Marshfield Tigers, and they beat Marshfield 80-48. to Zabel, 31 points. Uh, Zeta Kolbeck had 21 for Marshfield. So both West and Marshfield, I think, found out how far do you have to go in terms of the better teams in the state of Wisconsin? Because Nina is going to be one of those better teams. Yeah, and, you know, it's 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 a tough measuring stick right away. You want to challenge your programs in these non-conference games, you know, you're you're going to get challenged by Nina. You take take the Zabel girl. When you say 2,000 points, two things have happened. They're one great score. They're a good athlete. They're, they're, they're a stud, and they've been playing for a while, so they get that experience, and they've been playing probably since the time they're a freshman. So, you know, what those coaches are doing is, is measuring themselves, playing to get some of the best in the state, seeing what you've got to work on, what you've done well on against them, and taking that into next game consideration every time they take the floor. So, uh, you know, Marshfield sitting at 1-1 one one with with a win over Earl Killer North, lost to Nina and West, only having that Nina game looking to get for, forward in some games over the Thanksgiving break here. You got D.C. Everest coming off a really tough year a season ago, and uh, uh, the Evergreens, uh, a very young team this year now. Uh, they fell in their opener 52-24 to to Green Bay Preble last Friday. Uh, McKenna Bullis had 10 points for the Evergreens, but uh, right now it's a rebuilding project for Coleman Schilling, the uh, head coach of D.C.E., because last season had to have been rough for everybody involved. And now with, uh, again, a lot of youth on this team, it's going to take time, and it's going to take, again, patience in order for, I think, D.C. Everest to get back to where we came to expect the Evergreens for many years. Yeah, it's it's well, it's a tough role when you're when you're initiating and building your program right away and laying down the foundation that you want for years to come, and it's like graduation just happens really quick, and some of the kids you tried to put some things in with are gone, and then youth comes in. It, it's just going to take a little more time than that one year to, to turn the corner, and you can see in the score of the first game where it was 52-24 versus Green Bay Preble, and then they you know they pop back and play in the the Tom Kissel Classic mm-hmm. over Thanksgiving break here where they're going to play Regis. Uh, you know, but it's, it's fun always to look in the scores, and you see Matt Bolas's daughter <laughs> is one of the one of the right. scores on the team who's the former DC Everest coach so how things kind of recycle I think is always a neat thing but it's going to take some time and talking to coach Schilling you know uh, uh, outside the uh, basketball on the sidelines and stuff he's you know, always mentioned the stuff he's trying to instill in the girls and, and he's got the right frame of thought and it just you know you got to get that into them to make them do well he talks to you no, well just when seeing him at tournaments no but he actually side. when you come by you he actually talks to you people he talk to he me doesn't sometimes say, he doesn't say go away no okay, well, okay. when you see them at, at, at camps or things your kids participate <laughs> all right, in all right. they're nice if you say to, so, to say, say so i mean if, i'm assuming he probably does yeah. not it's like okay when's he gonna leave and uh yeah. no <laughs> and they're not trying to push me away yet so and, and the Go two ahead. other teams in the valley wassa eastern wisconsin rapids both start one and one uh lumberjacks fell to shauna last thursday 76 39 they beat Gillette last night 59 33 uh rapids uh, coming off a pretty rough season a year ago they started with a 56 33 win against toma in their opener and then uh last night uh, they fell to eau claire north 84 uh, 54 Again, for Wasa East, you know, positivity. You get that W. I know Shawano, it must be a pretty decent team. They gave uh, Lakeland a pretty good game last night on the road. And then last night, uh, East be able to win 59-33. Again, steps. And I imagine, especially for teams that struggled a year ago or have struggled historically, it's about taking steps. Yeah, and I think, and unfortunately, you know, there's little things you can build off of and losses. And when you don't do as well as you want, you can find some of these, these stepping stones, so to speak. But for the kids and sometimes even the coaches to, to have that proof, it's the scoreboard. And so that win at Jill, it's a big deal, I think, early on to start building some confidence to say, hey, if we do some of these things that we're trying to put in in our offensive and defensive schemes, they're working. Um, you know, rapid, same idea, getting that consistency because uh, they used to have when they were challenging for mm-hmm. the, the confer- up on the title of conference. Funny thing is both of them got to come back and play. In New London's typically pretty good, and I think both of those guys <laughs> for Rapids and East, their next games are versus New London, so not any easier. For the Great Northern Conference, let's kind of focus on the two teams expected to be among the best in this league. Uh, you got Lakeland and you got Mosany. And uh, Lakeland has, I think, again, one of the top performers in uh, the conferences that we keep an eye on on this program as, uh, again, expected to uh, be huge as Christina Womet. And now her sister has moved on to the college ranks, and Christina Womet has helped Lakeland to a 2-1 and one start with three massive scoring performances. Uh, Lakeland started off with an 80-51 to 51 win over West Osha Central at the Beaver Dam Classic fr- last Friday. Uh, Womet had 37 points, 8-15 of 15 on three-pointers. 
Then on Saturday, Lakeland fell to Wanakee, 65-62. Well, Matt had 28 points, and a couple of other players who were in double digits in the first game also were in double digits in the second game. Uh, Sailor Timmerman and Ava Evenhouse, uh, they had 10 points each. And then last night, well, Matt added 34 more points to help Lakeland pass Shawano, 56-48. Well, Matt is going to be just an incredibly productive player this year. But the thing for Lakeland is they do have some good size, and they also have some good production that's going to make them very dangerous as a team. And that's the exact thing. I was gonna, there is more than we met there, which is going to allow that team to open it up a little bit. They challenge themselves in their non-conference schedule. We saw this for the last two years where they go out and play against uh, some difficult teams, and, and, and right away they're playing levels up and, and, and Division One teams in these tournaments that they can get in over the, over the weekend or over a Thanksgiving or Christmas break. So that's prepped them because they lost in the sectionals two years ago, and last year they made it down to state. Um, and, and, and I think that Coach Wimet's just building a – she's built a solid program there, you know, and, and you see it show up. And, and to have that supporting cast and have that scoring punch, it, it's going to take them – a long ways this season, and, and obviously heavy favorites to win that conference. And Mozania will be right there. They were 10-2 and two in the conference a year ago, second place behind Lakeland. Uh, they bring back pretty much everybody from their squad from a year ago, and uh, they got a win over Lake Mills, 70-60. to 60. They had lost to a New London by two uh, er, last week, and I kind of mentioned it while you were away, but they had yeah. lost a, a good non-conference opponent to start things off. But uh, last Friday, Mosinee beating Lake Mills, 70-60. to 60. Uh, It was uh, Taylor Jersley, 19, Bridget Fry, 18, Addison, Henrik, 16 for Mosinee. And something that really jumped out is uh, Mosinee was 24 of 25 at the line. You don't see that very often, especially in the girls' game. I mean, for them to go 24 for 25 at the free throw line, very impressive. But, again, it's a team that was a, a bit up and down in the non-conference a year ago. They got Coach McKellops back this year, which obviously is going to be an interesting dynamic after you know everything that happened last year. But uh, talent-wise, it looks like this Mosinee team could be you know a challenge for Lakeland. Well, I'm happy to see Coach McKellops back because I've seen him in action working with the youth at some of the camps my kids were at over at Mosinee this summer and, and, and did a nice job and obviously does a nice job with his high school program. Uh, the, you know, again, to take a two-point loss right away out of the gates to New London, very respectable program, and turn around, pop back, get a, get a win at Lake Mills, um, I think is a big deal. Uh, you know, Mosinee's going to be in the running for things, and schedule doesn't get real easy for them. Lakeland Mosinee go head-to-head, I think, in the first conference game of the season on November 28th. So, uh Mosinee's balanced. They got enough guard play. They had, had kids that always come through in enough of a scoring punch defense, solidified program. So I think uh, their biggest task is going to see in that first game early on how they do against Lakeland. It's going to be a good challenge. Yeah, we'll talk more about the other teams in the GNC a bit later if we have the time. Uh, Merrillwood South uh, already knee deep into the conference because yeah. they had full nights of conference play uh, both late last week and now last night as well. Uh, last week, uh, last Thursday, Assumption beat Newman Catholic 79-29. Uh, Sarah Shaw, 28 points for Assumption, uh, 12 points for Mallory Rosbodowski for Newman Catholic. Uh, and then, again, Assumption last night to roll past Edgar, 80-26. to 26. Uh, Addie, Addie Volert had 21 points for the Royals. I think going into this season far and away in terms of experience and, and uh, talent and uh, you know, winning pedigree, Assumption looks to be well ahead of the pack uh, with a lot of question marks with some of these other teams who lost a lot in terms of starters. Yeah, I think odds early on odds favorite is going to be Assumption. They just the, the pressure they can increase. You you saw it first. Mm-hmm. The, the pressure that they're able to turn into these teams is is instantly adds, adding to their transition offense. So it's just and they got the experience. They got some inside out stuff. They've got kids that have been around that program for a long time. So they're it's just established. And I think you know. It's going to be who's finishing second, third, fourth in that conference. It's going to be what the race we're going to watch because Assumption's going to run away with it, uh, I think. But when it's all said yeah. and done, it's going to be very difficult to catch them at least, you know, early until we find out whether some of these teams do have some newcomers that can be uh, impact players. Uh, Edgar did get a win over Marathon last Friday, 36 28. Michaela Workus, who has some experience for the Wildcats, had 16 points. Uh, Miley Hawkey at 14 for Marathon. It's been a bit of a tough start for the Red Raiders uh, last night, a game that we had here on WXCO. Uh, Marathon's offense continued to struggle. They fell to Stratford, who played their first game of the season, 42-21. Uh, Tria Tubbs had 13. Kayla Casperson, 10 for Stratford. Hawkey had 9 for Marathon. 
first of all, Marathon, they're a team that's very inexperienced. Uh, they lost pretty much, much most of their production from last season. Uh, they have a couple of sophomores uh, in Halky and also Emma Love, who are, I think, going to be able to provide some production as the season continues. Hawkey's already, I think, showing uh, some of those signs. But I think it's going to take time for Coach Schneider's team. And I thought it was an impressive win for Stratford last night, a team that struggled last season. They only had four conference wins a year ago. Uh, they didn't have uh, much back in terms of experience as well. So I think for them, it's a very positive start to the season. Well, it's a for Stratford, it's a significant win, 42-21 over an established marathon program in the in, in the Merrillwood South. They've on the road. They, yeah, they've done they've done well. Or marathon's done well over the years. So I, I think you hit it right on the head. Where you you, you know there's, it's going to take time. There's inexperience there. You've got to establish who your your key players are that are going to show some leadership, and that's sometimes hard to get out of youthful players because they always think they have more time. So you can kind of see in the numbers that that's probably the next stage they're going to look for. Where's our offense coming from? Who's going to be consistent? And uh, so we can get that first conference W. I mentioned as well, Newman lost to Assumption last night. Cardinals home opener against Auburndale. Played their first game in Auburndale. Uh, knocked off the Cardinals 47-39. Cards had a 17-16 lead at half. Uh, Kylie Anderson, 12. Uh, Braley Grimm, 11 for Auburndale. Uh, Mel Severson and Lily Shields each had 10 for Newman Catholic. Obviously for Newman, a new head coach. And for Auburndale, five new starters. But still, the way Auburndale has performed in recent years, they're expected to be a team that's challenging in that top half of the conference. Yeah, and if you jump to Newman first, like you said, I didn't mention it before with Coach McCarville, it takes time for a team to find its identity. People got to be patient, let the coach get their systems in. And for the girls at Newman, you know, I, I, since I work over there, I, you know, I've been there a lot with things and I can see exactly what's going on you know they've had a lot of different coaches over the years so to get some establishment in there is going to make a big deal and and obviously with their guard play with shields roswadowski severson that's going to play a big key for auburndale looking to vie for the top of that conference they want to be one of those teams that are back and and uh, i saw anderson who i think is tim anderson's <laughs> a lot of anderson's <laughs> yeah, all the time granddaughter knocking down some shots but uh, to newman's testament had a, had a lead on assumption at one point it was 17 16 versus auburndale which are predicted to be two of the top team mm-hmm. two of the top Ten, uh, two top teams in the conference. And uh, Merrillwood North, uh, teams uh, Athens, uh, highly ranked and with sports for entertainment purposes rankings. Uh, they <laughs> lost by 40 in their first game a week ago Tuesday to Nielsville, but came back and has uh, won a couple of games, uh, beat Abbotsford in a conference game last Thursday, 64-42. Uh, Sophia Coker, Giselle Hartwig, you know, experience back 24 and 23 points uh, respectively uh, they rolled past rib lake last night 71 27 coker 24 hartwick 21 uh, for athens and another team that's off to a really good start in the merrillwood north is phillips they rolled past prentice 83 36 in the conference opener uh, matea eckert who's been experienced for them at 22 points another experienced player casey egebrecht at 15 uh, brooke eckert 12 for phillips and uh, phillips uh, also rolled past Shawamigan Friday, 83-18, to 18, as uh, Matea Eckert and Casey Egerbrecht each 20. I think Athens looks like they got, again, some experience in production that has shown they can do it. And Phillips looks like a team that's got talent and experience production as well. So that conference, those two teams look like they could be setting up for a pretty good run during the course of the season. Yeah, I think they're going to slug it out again. They were co-champs last year, this year again one predicted to be first, the other second. Uh, for Athens, I, I, three double-digit scores, a big deal coming back from those kids transitioning from their junior to senior year. I think that's a lot of production, and it, it, it'll leave you in a good spot in a lot of games when you've got three girls averaging 13, 14, 15 points. Uh, Phillips has names that we've heard over the years that are back, and, and they've solidified themselves as one of the top teams up in the uh, northern half of the state with in, in Division Four with Eckert back. That's going to be a good deal. So it'll be fun to watch how that plays out as the season plays on. And uh, a team I wanted to mention before we take a break as well is Wittenberg Burnwood in the CWC East. Uh, they had a really good year a season ago. Uh, they got uh, quite a bit back. Uh, two of their top three scores, a couple of sophomores, uh, Roy Salveson and Malena Granquist. Salveson as a freshman was just terrific last season. And Whitburn defeated Rochelt 54-11, and they beat Antigo last night 66-42. They're 3-0 and early. And just based on what they were able to do last season, the, the talent they have back this season, I think that's a team that's going to be a very uh, interesting one to watch here in central Wisconsin and could perhaps could be one of the better teams in our area. And they reloaded. I mean, they lost yeah. two, a couple girls that really had 
put up a lot of points for them and for these other girls to step up and, and fill the void right away from the get-go without missing a beat. I mean, they you're talking, you know, even the first win against Pesh to go was 60 to 23, mm-hmm. 54, 11, 66, 42. Those are some good point productions and some su- significant uh, differentials where they're obviously playing on the defensive end. And, uh, you know, I think that they're uh, uh, going to be a team to keep an eye on and uh, see what they make doing the postseason once they run through their conference. We'll have more on the girls later. We'll have uh, more on the boys. We'll talk about them later. But now we will start a uh, three consecutive guests uh, coming up uh, at 7 o'clock. Mitchell Crockett, who is our student athlete guest from Northern Lutheran High School. Uh, 640, Norbert Durst from Wisports.net. And coming up next, our coach guest for this week, the head coach of the Merrill Blue Jays, Mike DeBoer. That's coming up straight ahead here on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Take your career to the next level with Graphic Packaging International. Work with a team to make Hot Pocket sleeves and the food trays you find at our local fair. Join the GPI team and experience the benefits of one of the highest paying manufacturers in the area, starting at almost $22.55 per hour. Enjoy job security, a clean facility, and an excellent benefits package, including a week of vacation after four months and two weeks after a year. Apply today at graphicpkg.com and elevate your career with Graphic Packaging. Fall sports are here. Align your young athletes and yourself with health by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Sarah at Shine Chiropractic in Rim Mountain. Stay in the game with our comprehensive three-point neurological exam. Safe for the entire family. Don't let the daily grind keep you and your student athletes on the sidelines this year. Call Dr. Sarah at 715-298-5104. That's 715-298-5104 in Rim Mountain today. What's your idea of fall fun? Maybe it's hitting the trails on a new ATV. Then it's time to call CCU. That's Clover Belt Credit Union. Or if you're thinking of a UTV for hauling wood or hunting, or maybe just because it would make the tasks around your property so much easier, it's time to call CCU. ATVs, UTVs, utility tractors, and their attachments for care of your property. Whether you need it for fun or to get the job done, Clover Belt Credit Union is here to help with the great rate financing you want. What are you waiting for? Life's too short and winter's too long. Thinking about a motorhome or maybe a snowplow for your ATV or utility tractor? Call CCU for great rate financing. And if you're thinking motorcycle, Clover Belt Credit Union has the financing you need for the bike you want. Call or apply online at ccuwasaw.com. Check it out. For vehicle loans, for mortgages, for financing fall fun, call Clover Belt Credit Union. That's CCU. Local lenders lending local money. Keeping our community strong. And welcome back. Big High School Sports Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30 online at bullfallsradio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Along with Jeff Grass, I'm Chad Holmes, and very happy to welcome our coach guest for this week, the head girls basketball coach at Merrill High School, Mike DeBoer. And Mike, good to have you back on. Hey, great to be back. It's Thanksgiving Eve. It's year <laughs> two in a row. I'm a uh, man of habit here. Yes, yes. And <laughs> get to kick off the coaches uh, for a second year in a row. Thank you uh, for having me. Did you get him a plaque or anything? <laughs> I mean, he, he, should get a, he should start getting a, something that says... For consecutive years, well, you're, the you're, you're the first basketball coach in the new digs. I think that's uh, that's well worth it right there, isn't it? You know, oh exactly. yeah, for sure. Year three is the play. Huh? There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, let's talk about because your team actually got underway as early as you could possibly do it. Played the first night of the season. Uh, who did you have when game one it was? Uh, Shy Octon. I was going to say Shy Octon, but I didn't trust myself. And uh, a 30 plus point win. And then Ashland uh, earlier the, uh, last Thursday, a uh, nice long trip. It's a much nicer trip home when you win 61 uh, 16. But uh, what has jumped out early? Uh, not just the first two games, but maybe the scrimmages, practices early. Anything in particular about this group of girls jump out uh, in the early going? Yeah, I'm really grateful to be off to a 2 0 start. Um, but what's really jumped out is uh, not necessarily the seniors, but we got a sophomore, Kayla Clarebo, that's really come on and played well. We got a freshman in Grace Ryman who's really stepped up and is going to be a, a huge varsity contributor to her, to her. Then we have another sophomore, Brenna Jerkovic, who played uh, JV2 last year, and she's come out of the gates uh, ready to rock and roll, competing for varsity minutes and, like, 
it's it's a good balance, a good mix of girls. Like the fight that they have, the aggressive that they want to play with, their understanding of how not to foul, like the aggressiveness that we played with the first two games, uh, holding a, a Shy Octon team to 11 points in the first half uh, was really impressive, uh, a little bit better than I expected. And, uh, you know, you're always grateful to be 2-0. and all. Before Jeff jumps in, actually, uh, interesting, you talked about the aggressiveness, and uh, I saw your team scrimmage uh, before your first game of the year, and you had five different scrimmages. And one thing that jumped out is uh, while watching, it felt like there were times – because you're not a big team you're not a team that has a lot of size so you're going to be i think again using the three-point field goal using the outside shot but there were times it felt like you were settling and when you started to get a little more aggressive that's where you were effective where you can't just settle but if you have that mentality to try to you know penetrate kick and do what you know just make sure it's that your opponents don't know that you're kind of just you know, moving the ball around the outside it looked like that was kind of a key from my amateur point of view that day yeah chad <laughs> like you're you're onto something there right like our tallest player is five nine how are the boards going to be how are the boards going to be against the tough valley conference right uh where we're the smaller team every day so how do we combat that right turnovers got to be a part of it the three-point shots got to be a part of it the free throw lines got to be a part of that all that together and when we have all three of those going well in our direction and we can win that stat and compete on the boards like, we can be a difficult team, but a super fun team to watch. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, everybody's, conf everybody's conference is always tough. You go out and duke it out with each other. Um, how important are these first couple games to get ready for that? Because I know one thing with both the, the boys and the girls' Valley teams, you get your little warm-up. You know, you get some other games in where some of these other teams are already right into conference fights, and it's like right on the get-go. We could be playing the top team in the conference. So how important are those first games to learn a lot about your team in terms of, of the scheduling and setting that up? Yeah, yeah, that's a, a good point. Last year we had six games before we ever played a conference game, and I thought, like, we kind of wore down a little bit. We played Thanksgiving weekend, and we lost both of them. Then we went played Ellsworth, and it was a struggle. And, like, now we played two we got this week off, two more next week, and then we open it at Marshfield. And just uh, like getting our grips of who we want to be, how we want to play. Now we're going to correct some things this week. Then we have a really good Shawano team coming in mm -hmm. on Tuesday who returns their five, you know, score five starting five from last year. Leonor Dean's a sophomore that's got D1 offers, right? So we get, we're going to get tested on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, but just. Like, it's good to – now we can relax and work on us this week, and we did that these last three days. Let's talk about a little deeper some of these players. Uh, you mentioned Maya Ott. She's been around, it seems like, for quite a while already. She's been such a, a good produ a producer for your team. And I, so a couple of numbers I noticed, uh, I think it was your last game, in fact, was she got to the line and she made the free throws. And that's so important. Because even in that game where you won by quite a margin, the field goal percentage was not high. But that also means – you of course of course don't count the shots when you get fouled and if you get to the line you make the shots that made i think maybe a 25 percent if i'm not mistaken uh from the field and yet we were able to win by a big margin because you did other things well and i think maya Ott could be an example of that because it may have been a rough shooting night from the field but boy she took advantage at the free throw line and it turns out to be a very good evening and again to be multi-dimensional i imagine for somebody like maya Ott is very important yeah you are you're you got it chad like <laughs> Maya Ott is... Uh, We're uh, going to give this guy a plaque yeah. pretty soon if yeah. he's talking like that. Oh, he's, yeah, he's pumping up the host, man. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, he knows that's what that's he's doing. That's how you get to be first, <laughs> He knows right? what he's doing here. Go ahead. You know, Maya Ott's a self-made player. Like, she works in the gym incredibly hard on her game. And she knows, like, her shooting performance and sees that stat. But, like, look at the free throw line. 13 of 15 in that game. We shoot 25 of 30 from the team to get to 61. And, yeah, we didn't shoot it well. We didn't play well. Talking with another senior as we walked off the floor to the bus, like, doesn't even feel like we win. Like, that's the standard we've created, that expectation now, that, like, they know when they're playing well and when they're not. And they've been through a lot together. The first year was rough. And now, like, we have some standards. We have some expectations. They feel that that pride in how they play. And, like, that's what you want as a coach, right, for them mm -hmm. to reflect and see that themselves. Uh, so I couldn't be more happy with her, with my, Maya and uh, our progress so far. 
and and looking at you just any of your other girls what you know i think it's a constant battle as a coach because you're constantly defining roles you're constantly getting people maybe to accept roles you're constantly getting people to redefine their game you know add this to it take this away a little bit it's just a big jigsaw puzzle and how important is it or, or i guess some other some of your other players what are some of the other things you already you know you said we're working on depth we've got these other kids doing this and this besides ah what else do we have when we when we watch a Merrill girls basketball game yeah the, there there's so many to talk about we'll just start with sophie windorf she's a senior we're going to be led by three seniors she's a quiet girl with big game right last year at point when we beat them at home right she had 14 points perfect from the field big layup at the end quiet girl but in big moments really steps up going to be a key for us obviously maya Ott, she's worked so hard on her game i told a coach halfway through her sophomore year, that she's going to score 1,000 points. She's at 700 now. She's on her way if she stays healthy. And, like, like it's a bright future. Hopefully beyond this year, there's opportunity for her. Her twin sister, uh, Maddie Ott, like, some people talk about glue girl or glue guy. Like, I, I mean, that probably doesn't define her enough. Like, she's our cornerstone. Like, she pulls away like the building's going to crumble. And, like, her effort, her attitude, her leadership at the point guard, her defense, her tenacity, like all of that has just been off the charts from a girl that doesn't have 100 career points. It's not about that. She's defined her role. She knows who she is. And we're going to be led by three seniors that their teammates voted all of them, team captain, like 100% for those three seniors. It's going to be a sad senior night, a sad last game. But, like, understand, as sophomores, they're all on varsity when we won four games, right? Yep. We won 15 <laughs> games last year. If we can do that again, I don't know if we can. A Merrill girls team hasn't won back-to-back 15-game win seasons since the 90s. Like, and that's pretty cool legacy to stand on. Um, and I'm excited for that opportunity and, and see what we can accomplish. Again, we're talking to Merrill High School Blue Jay head girls basketball coach Mike DeBoer here on Bull Falls Radio. Uh you mentioned these seniors, and now this is your third season as the head coach. How different is it now that you've had a couple of seasons to establish the foundation for this program, to have girls that have been now through it for three years that know the way that you want things done and are buying into the way that you want things done? I imagine that you're seeing some of these blocks starting to build within your program. Yeah, for sure. And you guys talked earlier about some new coaches in the Valley, right? And establishing your identity and how you want to play and when you have a four win season and you go to stevens point and you leave 84 to 17 right it really opens your eyes right like you know you reassess everything because you can't you sleep your eyes are open right <laughs> yeah 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 they're all bloodshot <laughs> it's a struggle, right? but you know you fast forward that to 12 months 14 months later and we have point and home you know the team that kind of beat us up pretty bad and let us know that and we get them on our home floor and beat them last year, like it just turns the program around and people, their eyes are opening to, to what we can do and what we've accomplished. And now we got some of these instilled things that expectations are coming, right? And with expectations comes confidence and comes uh, ability to play and trust in your teammates. And uh, it's been it's been so much fun. Let me jump on more uh, building on that. The buy-in from the parents and the whole basketball community, and from again, from the outside, uh, I had a chance to see a little bit of your team the last couple of years, but from everything I've heard, there has been a complete buy-in where they understood that it's going to take some time to build and that even though the wins that weren't coming in year number one, having the buy-in, I imagine, has led to the success that you've seen in the last now year plus two games. Yeah, for sure. The buy-in from players, buy-in from parents has been fantastic now the next thing that needs to come is we got to get more players out for Mm. basketball right we have one freshman out in the eighth grade class that looked pretty good right and we're winning games but like you know it's all volleyball and club volleyball Mm. and how how do we overcome that like as a you know girls basketball program right because that sustainability can't be consistent right my last two senior classes didn't have one girl that played volleyball I have one girl in each class now, so that's four girls total in a six-year stretch that play both volleyball and basketball. 
Like, and it, we're a declining enrollment, right? Mm -hmm. So like that's got to change. That culture's got to change. I've haven't having conversation about that. The buy-in's been great. We're winning more games. Now we got to get more girls excited to play basketball, and I want to play for that team. Mm -hmm. I want to play for that coach. That's the next step in this for us. Does it help? Because I consider that a problem at a lot of schools where you can't get that participation anymore. How many teams are we seeing that can't even put a JV team on the floor and they just focus on the varsity? Well, how does that help build anything? And you're scrambling to get girls out and you're fighting with other sports. Does you think in the end of the day, is your philosophy leading into how you're scheduling? You know, you say the conference is difficult. There's a lot of we're going to get our good games in that conference and I'll schedule non-conference how we need to to build confidence to play well. With those W's coming, do you think that'll be a natural lead in, or are there other ways that you're gonna that you got racking in your brain that you're gonna go about this to build those numbers up because you know it's gonna hit a head or a wall at some point? Well, we're, that's certainly part of it. There's no question. I think uh, the WIA has created a formula for coaches to like we got to schedule to win games and we got to schedule uh, to get a high seed so we can get home playoff games. That's what all of that's about and we play in a very tough conference right nobody wants to be on a, a floor when you lose by 40 in a right. conference game right and we were there two years ago and i think the valley's wide open this year i'm excited to see how this all shakes out uh, but as far as con non-conference like like if you were to look at our schedule right you understand yep. like shy octon has been a good program for the last five years 10 plus wins every year right florence is coming next Thursday. They got a girl that has almost 1,500 points mm. entering her senior year yep. on our home floor. Great test. Shano's going to be a fantastic game. Like, there's tests within those. Right. But then when you play, you know, 10 D1 games a year in your conference and you go back to 2011, we've went five and we went five and five last year. We went six and four one other year. So we've always been below 500. And if you look at the Valley last year taking us out, there are 28 and 43 in non-conference games, right? How do you make up for that disparity when they're winning 39% of their non-conference mm. games, right? It comes from my non-conference mm. scheduling. Right. That's why it's in there. That's why we're trying to play teams that are going to win at their level in their conference that we can play <coughs> and compete with, right? Uh, and then hopefully, because when you look, like our region's different now. Like Lakeland's still there. But Rice Lake's coming. Menominee's coming, right? Them are the top three in our region. Can we win enough games, schedule enough, have a good strength of schedule that we could get a seed higher than one of them? Yeah. And ultimately have a home playoff game. Right. Now that would be something, all right? And uh, that's why it's in there the way it's in there. And uh, like we're excited to compete and, and see how it shakes out. What about the Valley? It, again, a lot of change. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, I think it's been a little bit of a rough start for a few of these schools as well. Do you feel like there's opportunities for your program right now to work its way up in the Valley? Yeah, I think so for sure. Um, when you Right now they're three and seven, the Valley outside of us, right? Marshfield, I think, is the clear, clear favorite in the Valley. And then you go see them lose by 30. And it's just like central Wisconsin, we're behind a lot of their areas. But when, who's the second best team, right? Is it point at 0 and 2, right? They they beat they lost to Appleton West by two. Appleton West beat Chai Octon by eleven and was down one at halftime, right? Like where are we in this right. mix, right? That's what we'll figure out. What's Wausau West? Like that's a you're never as bad as your worst game, right? They, they got plenty of time to turn it around with a new coach. Where's Rapids in this mix? East gets better every time I see them play, and so like, who's going to be second? Who's going to be sixth? You don't know. I right don't now. know. <laughs> We're going to get to play the games. Winning at home is going to be incredibly mm -hmm. important. Can you go get some on the road? And then, like, is Marshfield going to lose a game in the league? And when you get to play them, like, can you rise up like we did for Point last year uh, and pull off a shocker, right? Like, <laughs> where people have to check the score again, right? That's what we want. Well, and that's a big deal, I think, you know, looking at your conference, and, and that's the beauty of the conference play. Any given night, who's there? And, and it's a rivalry thing. And can you get your girls to rise up? What do you, you know, just project out past into Christmas a little bit, these next couple of weeks, looking at your team? You know, what's one of the things you really want to see from them that you feel like, hey, this is awesome. And then, you know, here's some things that we're going to have to uh, overcome or I want to see better so we can keep winning the games and, and building this um, this camaraderie and this program the way we want the public to see it as we're what we're establishing. 
Yeah, um, next week we got Chano Florence both at home. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But then we open the Valley with three road games right away at Marshfield, at West, at East. So we got to show up on the road uh, in some tough environments. Uh, how, how do we handle that? We have a lot of unknowns after our three seniors. All of them played JV last year. They were on the varsity bench with not a lot of experience, right? How, their growth and their development, the wide eye coming, going to Marshfield <laughs> your first game, right? Like, how are we going to handle that? And and because uh, there's a level of play in the valley that we don't always see in, in the non-conference, even in the Great Northern when we play those schools. Uh, one of the things I've tried to instill since that loss to point is we got to play faster, especially early in the year, because you can always slow down later in the year. So we're speeding up and we're playing quick right now. We're playing fast right now. My first year, we started slow. We're going to control pace. And then when these teams come running at you, we had no chance to catch up. Yeah. Uh, but by the end of the year, we'll really figure out our style and where we want to play, given the girls that we have. Uh, but what I just want to see is like us fight in those games, compete in those games, being 5'9", playing 6'2", yeah. Kelly Cray. What's that look like for us, yeah. right? How can we speed them up to get um, them to play our tempo and our style of basketball? And uh, we'll, see. we'll see. I'm, like, excited for it because there's so much unknown, both on my roster, both in the Valley, and uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. Fantastic. Anything else for the coach? No, it's just going forward. Obviously, wish you good luck. It's exciting to see. I like I like the analyzation of your team. You gotta know the heads of the players to get the most out of them, and 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 the stats and stuff you're spitting out. I think uh, you know your team very well, which is a big deal. And also, I think you have been as far ahead of anybody that we've talked to the last couple of years on knowing how to beat the computer. <laughs> I mean, and I say that's the biggest compliment because it's very important. I mean, you you seem to have understood it very early, and it's been very effective, and it's really good to see. I totally agree with you, and we'll see how it shakes out if we get a seed higher than one of them three, like pay attention. Um, and then, like, uh, you know, like I'm excited for it all. <laughs> like it's been fun, and I thank you guys for having me on. Today. Absolutely. Merrill High School – Blue Jay girls basketball head coach Mike DeBoer. Coming up, we're going to talk statewide girls basketball. Maybe even talk to computers. Who knows? Norbert Durst coming up next as we continue here on the Big High School Sports Show on Bow Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Hungry for flavor-packed fun? Dive into Red Robin's sizzling burgers, mouth-watering fries, and endless options. Or maybe you're craving the perfect slice. Then it's Donato's Pizza, your passport to pizza perfection. Order now and treat yourself to an unforgettable taste experience. Red Robin and Donato's Pizza, 225548 Rib Mountain Drive in Wausau. Call 715-301-0019 or log on redrobin.com. Red Robin and Donato's Pizza. Yum. For more than 60 years, Sun Printing has been Central Wisconsin's commercial printer of choice due to their commitment to quality, creative solutions, and dedicated service. Sun Printing's team offers you a wide spectrum of services. Whether you need vehicle graphics, offset, digital, large format, graphic design, or mailing, they print everything under the sun. No project is too big or too small, so give Sun Printing a call at 845-4911 or visit them online at sunprinting.com. If you're looking for your next ride, check out Mankey GMC in Schofield. Formerly Fred Miller Automotive, Mankey GMC serves Schofield, Wausau, Marshfield, and Stevens Point with a huge selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. Explore a range of top-notch SUVs like Acadia, Terrain, and Yukon, or choose from the rugged Sierra truck lineup, or even a certified pre-owned vehicle. No matter your dream, your dream vehicle awaits at Mankey GMC, 448 Grand Avenue in Schofield, and online at MankeyAuto.com. Mankey GMC in Schofield, where your journey begins. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Wisconsin, because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com.
And welcome back. Big high school sports show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. BullFallsRadio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO. Thanks again to Merrill High School girls basketball coach Mike DeBoer for joining us. And now uh, we'll be talking uh, generally uh, girls high school basketball as we get into the uh, new season with Sports.net, their chief girls basketball writer, Norbert Durst. And Norbert, again, uh, it feels like we just were talking to you at the end of last season, but it's great to be back talking some girls high school basketball. And thanks for uh, joining us here this night before Thanksgiving. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on. Always enjoy being on your show. Terrific. Well, I've had a chance to see a little bit of girls basketball so far. Unfortunately, I cover three game, uh, three teams on a play-by-play basis, and I've had four games, and none of my teams have yet to win. So it's been a bit of a rough go of it. Uh, I thought we'd start off by talking about some of the bigger schools. Of course, we cover Wausau West here, uh, Wisconsin Valley Conference. It's been kind of a, a rough start. Uh, I saw Wausau West take on, again, one of the best teams in the state of Wisconsin, and Ali Zabel, one of the best players in the state of Wisconsin, and Nina last week. Nina then went to Marshfield last night and really roughed up the Tigers. Uh, Stevens Point lost to a couple of FBA teams already. I, I'm a little fearful at this point. Does it look to you as well that the the, the power centers, again, are, are to the east of where we are here in central Wisconsin? Yeah, the FBA is still uh, going to be right on top of uh, the best conference in the state. Um, you know, re- regardless of what uh, division you're looking at, uh, top to bottom is just so good. Uh, you know, last season, uh, Kimberly, I believe, finished sixth in the league. And uh, they reach a sectional final. Uh, it just shows how tough that league is. Um, you know, and it's not just, you know, the top four in that league. You know, it goes all the way down to dang near the bottom of it. So uh, uh, that's just what it is. But, you know, the nice thing is, is while some of those, you're going to be taking some lumps, I think, you know, just being able to play those teams, you can at least gauge on, on what you're trying to do. And, you know, uh, but right now, it is just going to be the FBA dominating those games. But, you know, I do think Marshfield will have a good season. Um, but when you're you're playing against one of the best teams in the state, um, it's going to be difficult, especially when you're going against Ali Zabel. And Norbert, do you? See, I, I know I, this 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 thought process always haunts me because it, it's around here for us when Chad and I are talking about Central Wisconsin and and not getting out of the area and beating each other up here, but then they struggle against the Fox Valley and all. Any insight as to why that is? Because it just I don't know. This might be sick, my sixth, seventh year doing this with Chad, and every year as we're going into the playoffs and those teams start running into each other, like you said in the Fox Valley Association, it's so deep from top to bottom that the top teams in the Wisconsin Valley struggle against it. And I've heard things from, well, it's the facilities. It's kids focusing on one sport. It's a different environment. I can never exactly put my finger on it, but it's an obvious pattern that shows that the, the schools in that area are the teams that are, are, are getting a little farther, doing a little more damage, and coming out on top and, and getting those sectionals with a chance to go to state where the, the Valley struggles to do that after after one or two playoff games. Any insight as as to why? And obviously you can say you don't know either, but I'm just curious if you have any opinion or philosophy on that. You know, I think it's a, a lot of those things you mentioned, you know, uh, great facilities, uh, um, great uh, AAU programs. Um, you know, I think that, ma- uh, that matters as well, not just, you know, going on play games, but uh, the development of that talent. And I think we talked about this last year. I think just the overall development – of the skills and how quick and ready to go those kids in the FBA are. I think that's the, the difference. And, you know, it's, you know, it is maybe part of, you know, just the, the money that is in the Valley currently um, that helps, you know, uh, those, those families take the kids to the top level events and, you know, to be able to get showcased that way. But, you know, you know, it starts from the ground level and, you know, I just think it's a lot of things and, you know, maybe it is a little bit of, of uh, those players uh, focusing on one sport because we have seen that in the past where, you know, that that has changed where those big school players rarely play two sports, let alone three. So I think it's a a number of things. And and right now it's just, you know, it's one of those things where it'll probably change a little bit here moving forward. But right now the FEA definitely has a stranglehold as far as not just the top teams, but the top talent in the entire state. And one more for me, looking before Chad takes the next one with the Wisconsin Valley uh, Conference. Is there, you know, obviously you mentioned Marshfield already and like them, and and they're one of your, you know, your favorite for the top. I look at, you know, just the numbers and how the, some of these teams have already played or fared. 
that there could be a little bit more of an open spot for that second place. Do you see, I know you listed Spash as, as your second place choice, but do you see that spot finishing second, third, fourth uh, in the Valley being a little more open from, from what you've uh, experienced or, or, or written or thought about? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Marshfield's a clear one, but I think, you know, two through, you know, four or five, I think, you know, could be in that mix because there's been uh, not just change over in uh, players, but, you know, coaching changes. And that's that's one thing that's going to affect teams. And, um, you know, so uh, early on, we're going to see, you know, how those coaches coaches fare with that new uh, um, new level of talent and also just how they're going to change things um for their own program. But, you know, I really think it's, there's a number of teams that are going to be vying for that two spot. And then, you know, maybe a couple teams more at the bottom, but uh, um, you know, it's definitely going to be a competitive conference. Now, you know, as you talked about, maybe going out of it's going to be a little bit different, but uh, in the conference, I think it should be a very competitive year. Do you think that the bar is higher now overall in Wisconsin girls basketball? We see now multiple girls being uh, taken to UConn as K.K. Arnold is now there, and, of course, Ali Isabel will be heading there. Uh, do you do you feel like that in recent years the bar is higher, that maybe some of these other areas have uh, just lifted it up a little quicker than we've seen here in central Wisconsin? You know, I think that's probably true. I, I think because we've had that high-level talent, uh, some of those high-level teams, you know, you talk about uh, a Notre Dame team that, that this season could become the first team ever in girls basketball state history to win four consecutive state titles. Um, you know, they did lose to Pewaukee to start the year here, but Pewaukee is uh, a very good club themselves. But I think it is just how good, um, you know, some of these teams are. They're getting not just, um, you know, attention in the, the summer, but they're also getting attention during the school year, you know, as far as some of the best teams in the nation. So I think it is just elevating that. And, and maybe the Valley just isn't quite catching up to, to what uh, uh, the Fox Valley has currently, but usually it does change. And, you know, I think it just might take a few years for them to to grow and, and uh, get to that level. Again, we're talking to Norbert Durst, head girls basketball writer at wissports.net here on the Big High School Sports Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Uh, talking about the Great Northern Conference, I think we got ourselves a really good um, uh, top two teams in that conference. You got uh, Lakeland and Mosinee and uh uh, Lakeland, of course, was the uh, champ. They made it to the state tournament a year ago. Mosinee only lost to Lakeland in the conference. Had a little bit of uh, change, I would say, within that program, but still very talented, a lot back. I, I guess I want to start off with, uh, uh, I think, one of the, again, one of the best players, not only in the area, but in the state, Christina Wilmette for Lakeland. Uh, how do you look at her? How do you look at uh, Lakeland and Mosinee in the GNC? You know, uh, Christina definitely is a special player. I got to see her at uh, Beaver Dam last weekend. Uh, she put up 37 in that win and also went over 1,000 points. And, you know, she's going to be scoring at a high, high clip this season. Uh, now that Juliana has graduated, she's going to have to take a little bit more of that scoring role. And she certainly has already. And they're going they're a big team. As far as height goes, uh, they're going to have uh, 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 probably three six-footers out there most times during the game. So it's a matter of are they going to get enough out of those those more uh, forward wing players in, in the guards game to handle a Mosini team that, you know, they brought a lot back and they added a couple freshmen that, that are already making some noise. So I think that's going to be a challenge for Lakeland. But uh, as long as they can stay within what they want to do, Lakeland is, is probably uh, uh, maybe the better team. But, you know, basketball is a guards game, so I would not be surprised if, if they very least split, but Mosinee, again, with those guards they have, they could easily take both games uh, this season just because of how good they are and how good they've already started this season. Do you think that uh, just from, you know, watching Lakeland grow, you know, they went to the sectionals two year or lost in the sectionals two years ago, made a, made a state trip last year, and, and now, you know, they've they got one Wamet sister back, but one has graduated. You think they can make it there again, or is there some some uh, adversity in some of the the difficult teams they're gonna uh, face? Do you think they have a good shot? I guess is what I'm asking. Well, the, the, they would have probably had the, the sectionals not changed. Uh, the issue is uh, Notre Dame moved into their sectional, <laughs> uh, and so that that's going to make things very difficult for them. And you know, had Notre Dame not moved in, you know, there definitely would have been a shot there. I mean, 
Menominee's got a good program. Same with Rice Lake. So you look at maybe not Alaska, but uh, the normal teams that would be in that that sectional. But with Notre Dame coming in, it's going to be a very tall task for them to get back to the state tournament. You answered my question the minute you said Notre Dame. So (laughs) (laughs) good good call. (laughs) Another team here in central Wisconsin I think we're going to be keeping a very close eye on uh, is wittenberg Oh uh, Man, I mean, in terms of uh, young players who have really stepped in, uh, they had a couple of players that were freshmen last season that were double-digit scores, helping out the uh, then-senior Reese Rogowski. But uh, they're off to a very good start. Uh, again, young talent. Uh, I saw that you have them second in the C- in the CWC East behind only Bonduelle. But that wittenberg Burnwood team that had a very good year a season ago, looks like they could make some noise. Do uh, you have any thoughts on Whitburn? Yeah, I think they could definitely make a, a deep tournament run. They're they're a program that's historically, you know, wins a lot of games and uh, knows how to play defense. And, you know, when you do those kind of things, you give yourself a chance in the postseason. Um, you know, their sectional is fairly strong. They got freedom in there, that perennial power. Uh, freedom did lose uh, a good portion of their, their roster, but they're a team that, that just reloads that talent because it's – do they, you know, just one of those teams that's been strong year in and year out. And and on the other half of that section, you know, there's also Xavier. And Xavier's a team that didn't maybe uh, uh, win as many games as they would have liked last season, but they have a lot of uh, great returning players. So that's going to be difficult for, for Winnebago, uh, excuse me, for Wittenberg Bernamo to get out of that sectional. But, uh, you know, I definitely think they could make some noise and maybe get to a sectional semifinal. And I guess jump into one of the other conferences that we look really heavily at because Chad, Chad calls the games for him is uh, the Merrillwood South girls. Just looking at from what I've seen statistically, uh, you know, what's out there uh, for, for us to look at as spectators, um, assumption looks like kind of the cream of the crop. They've got a lot of scoring punch back. The, 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 the pressure that they create on these teams, it just looks like they're the early front runner to uh, – to take that conference, I think. But how, how about, again, making it back down to state? Do they look like they can be one of those teams that can get back down there too? Yeah, they definitely have a chance to get back to the state tournament. You know, uh, just a couple of years ago, they won the state title. Uh, the year prior to that, they got to the state tournament, finished as the uh, state runner-up that year, I believe. And, uh, you know, it's uh, – they really create havoc uh, on defense, and they can shoot the ball. I, they, they're a deep team. They definitely have a shot to get back to the state tournament. Uh, they're definitely a cream of the crop in the mirror itself. Um, the rest of the league should be very competitive, uh, as it usually is, but Assumption is definitely a clear favorite. Now, the issue for Assumption getting back to the state tournament is their, their sectional is absolutely loaded. It's got uh, the majority of the ranked teams in uh, in Division Five in that sectional. You have uh, uh, Randolph in there that won a state title a couple years ago. Oakfield reached a sectional final last year. Albany Monticello reached a state tournament is in that sectional. So it's going to be uh, tough to get there, but I still think that the, the, they're not just the best team in that section, but they're the best team in all of Division Five this season. So, uh, you know, they definitely have a good shot to take home another gold ball. Normally around here, the Merrillwood South kind of is uh, a step ahead of the Merrillwood North, but I think there's a couple of teams in the Merrillwood North this year that uh, could be just as good as basically everybody else in the Merrillwood South outside of Assumption. Uh, you got uh, Phillips, and you also have Athens. Athens ha- had a real rough go of it against Nielsville in their first game of the season, but they still have a-, a lot of good production back and should be a very solid basketball team. And that Phillips team has really come out firing uh, early on as well. Do you see those two teams as uh, potential deep runs as we get into the season? Oh, yeah, definitely. Phillips is a team that is usually right around that sectional area in Division Four. Uh, again, good guard play. That's going to give them a chance to uh, at least be in the hunt there. And, and when you're talking about Athens, you know, it's they're a tall team. That they're going to rely a lot on defense. Uh, their question is, do they have a good enough guard play to get to the state tournament? And that seemed to be maybe what their hiccups been in the past. You know, they can get by a few teams, but um, – you know, just haven't had enough to get to the state tournament yet. But, um, you know, that's that's a very good team, uh, a group of athletes that have reached the state tournament in volleyball. So you know that they're uh, it's a good uh, group of kids that know what to, how to play together. Um, but, you know, it, with uh, Assumption leaving that sectional, that definitely gives them a shot to get there. I believe it's them and Wabino Leona that would be the favorites. But, you know, when it comes down to it, the teams that – that uh, Athens plays, you know, I think they have a, definitely have a good, good shot to get to the state tournament this year. 
And actually a really good game coming up Tuesday is Phillips and Wabino Leona. One of those non-conference games early on that could, uh, I think, be a little bit of a measuring stick. And those are always fun games early on. Oh, yeah, definitely. Th- those early non-conference contests, just to kind of figure out, you know, where you're at, at least right now in the season is is always intriguing because sometimes, you know, you lose a player, player two, you might have an injury. And, you know, it's coaches always say it, you, you're going to be better at the later part of the year. So sometimes you might take a hiccup late, early part of the season just to kind of learn what you need to improve on so you can be ready to go when, when it, uh, all those uh, wins and losses matter a little bit more. Well, Norbert, I appreciate what you're sharing with, you know, you're, 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 we're, I've tried to just get going on the season here and you're getting me out at the end of the playoffs. Get me hungry <laughs> to see how some of these things are going to go. Cause you, you know, you know, you don't know the regionals the sectionals who's kind of set up. So I guess saying that and following through on that, do you have um, a- any of the teams in central Wisconsin here that we've kind of listed or talked about one of these conferences that you're, you're going to be excited to follow, to see where they are up, to see what they uphold towards the end of the season for, for a playoff or deep state run. You know, definitely assumption, you know, because I have them pegged number one in Division 5 to start the year. So they're definitely a team that I have, that I have my eye on, and I'm going to try to get up to a game this year, um, to that nice gym that they have. And uh, it's always exciting to see some of those small school games. I'm a small school uh a person myself, uh, I graduated class at 31, so I definitely enjoy those small school games. Uh, a really good environment. Um, so, you know, that's definitely number one on the list, but definitely still following, you know, Athens, following some of those other teams, Phillips, um, you know, and still following the Valley be- because, you know, it's even though you take some lumps early in the year, you can always uh, come back and, and figure out what, what you maybe uh, didn't do so well that first game to get, get a win when it matters. Terrific stuff as always, Norb. Uh, again, I encourage everybody to check you out uh, and all the great writings and the conference previews and everything else at Wisports.net. And I'm sure that we'll talk again sometime as we get into the winter. But again, appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Again, yeah, Norbert Durst, uh, head girls basketball writer for Wisports.net, joining us here on the program. Well, we got another hour to go here on the show, and we'll have our student athlete guest coming up next. Mi- uh, Mitchell Crockett from uh, Northern Lutheran High School, senior for the uh, Northern Lutheran squad. He'll be joining us coming up next. Along with Jeff Grass, I'm Chad Holmes, big high school sports show on Bull Falls Radio 98.9 and 12.30. WXCO 1230 AM, W255DN Wausau, streaming at bullfallsradio.com. There's a lot to be thankful for this weekend as high school hoop season kicks into high gear. I'm Travis Wilson, and this is a Wisports.net Minute brought to you by NFHSnetwork.com. More high school sports news after this. Do you ever wish you could be in two places at once? With homework, carpool, practice, and everything else, sometimes you just can't make it to every game. But the NFHS Network's streaming platform makes that a little easier. For just $11.99 a month, you can watch unlimited high school sports live and on demand. At home or on the go, you can watch online or on one of our mobile or connected TV apps. Visit NFHSnetwork.com and subscribe today to never miss another game. There's a lot to be thankful for as we switch from fall sports to winter sports with high school basketball action really heating up this weekend. The Thanksgiving holiday brings a number of basketball tournaments and events, including one of the state's longest running events, the 39th annual Cranberry Classic, with both boys and girls games taking place at Assumption High School in Wisconsin Rapids. The Tom Kislow Memorial Tournament at D.C. Everest will also feature both boys and girls contests. The Just a Game Thanksgiving Classic features six boys hoops games over two days in Wisconsin Dells. A couple sizable girls basketball events are slated for this weekend. The Brookfield Central Thanksgiving Classic features a solid field with 10 games on the docket. The Catamaran Thanksgiving Classic will see 14 games on Friday and 15 on Saturday with some of the state's top programs in action. In girls basketball from Tuesday night, Reedsburg Sydney Churney broke a school record with 52 points as the Beavers down Stoughton 77-58. A football note, Badger High School coach Matt Hensler was named the WFCA Packers Coach of the Year after guiding the Badgers to an unbeaten season and Division II state championship. On behalf of all of us at Wisports.net, thank you to our users and fans and a happiest of Thanksgivings to all of you. This has been a Wisports.net Minute. Check us out online at Wisports.net.
And welcome back. It's our number two of the Big High School Sports Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Online at bullfallsradio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. Along with Jeff Grass, I'm Chad Holmes. And time for our student athlete guest. We always start off the second hour of the show with our student athlete guest. And tonight uh, from Northern Lutheran High School, uh, Mitchell Croc. And Mitchell, first of all, thank you for coming on up. And we're going to explain how big the thanks is in a moment. But thank you uh, for coming on by and joining us this evening. Problem. And if you can get a little closer to the microphone, <laughs> we want to make sure everybody out there can hear you. Uh, number one, and you were talking to Jeff here just a moment ago, that uh, you've come all the way from Rapids here tonight. And I feel terrible about it, number one, because that's such a long drive. So I really do appreciate you coming on by to uh, join us here tonight. Yeah, that's no problem. I've been making the trip for four years, so I mean, <laughs> I it's it's no problem for me. Um, I like driving anyways, so it's good to get out of the house too. So. I guess we're going to start with that because that has to be a challenge both for school and for for, uh, for your athletics as well to, to have that. I, I guess, number one, it shows, again, that want to be at Northern Lutheran to take advantage of the opportunities both academically and athletically, but I, I imagine that it also forces you to be much better with your time than maybe a lot of us others that are much closer to whether we're working or going to school. Yeah, for sure. Um, I get up in the morning. I don't really take a long time to get ready, but then I just got to go get in the car and go to school. So, I mean, I'm just ready. And um, I mean, it's a lot of loss of sleep at night, but um, I just sleep in the car all the time too. So it's pretty nice. there. But. Well, and uh, another thing to add to the challenge is not only the travel time. I mean, we also have them here He's obviously got a Buck sweatshirt on. We got him here right during the Celtics Bucks game. I know. So we'll have to make up for that. But off air, off air, I didn't know that. Look, looking through the statistics and the research that I do before I come to the show is, is thinking about that when Wisconsin Valley uh, closed, that you guys possibly picked up some players. And you were mentioning off air that it, you know it takes us some time to get to know each other, which is why we're looking to forward to getting to practices and getting to our games and the scrimmage being a big deal. And I think at the same time you mentioned that. You get a little size out of it too, and I know one of the question marks in the book was size. Do we have the right size for this team? So that that's all help. How do you think, you know, in your opinion, that that process? Because so many of these teams coming forward have all been together since middle schools, and I think in my mind it is a tough transition because that was a rivalry school for you. You guys were button heads on the court and going after it, and everybody. I, I've I've seen some of those games. Everybody really wants to win that one. So how big a deal is these early stages of practice and getting together where you go from. Um, um, fighting each other on the court a little bit in terms of who's going to win to becoming allies and, and teammates. Yeah, so we had a couple of summer practices with them too, and they just kind of jumped right in, and they were fluid with our offense and defense. And um, in the starting practices of the year, we just kind of have – they just kind of slide right in, and they're fitting in pretty well so far, and I'm just um, excited to see what happens in the first game we have. Let's talk about your career because, as I said as well, off the air, uh, it's always you know interesting when we see somebody that uh, gets opportunities as a freshman and then able to grow through the sophomore, juniors, and now starting your senior year. I guess my first question is, how are you different as a basketball player now than the first time you hit the varsity court back as a freshman? Oh, well, freshman year, my first game that I was going into, I just had butterflies in my stomach. My coach was like, you ready to go in? I was like, yeah. I just My stomach just dropped to the ground <laughs> now. I'm one of the leaders on the court, and they just kind of um, look. The, the coach looks to me. He looks to me to be on players and just encourage them and really bring them up every time they get down, miss a shot, whatever. I'm there to pick them up and really get into that. Do you see your – does your leadership have to be more this year than last year? As you said, you, you know, you had leadership. Because obviously sometimes when you have other – you know, you're, you're a senior this year, right? Yeah. And obviously Zart was a, a senior last year, and he graduated and took on a chunk of the scoring at that point. And uh, – I know when due to graduation, next guy's got to step up. Do you see yourself taking on more of a role this year, or, or can you still – did you do a lot of it last year and you're just going to continue to pump it up forth? I think I just continue to do what I did. Um, it might um, – my stats might increase because with Karsten gone, but, um, I mean, it'll probably be about the same, and I'm just going to put forth the same effort that I have been doing, and the outcome will be what it is. And it is what it is, I guess. Again, we're talking to Mitchell Crock from Northern Lutheran High School, our student athlete guest this week on the Big High School Sports Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Uh, a year ago, you were second team all CWC North. You averaged around nine points and nine rebounds per game. When you look at your game, what would you consider the biggest strength of your game? And what is this area you're still thinking that, hey, I'm going to take a step forward in here in your senior season? Um, I think my strength is probably rebounds. I was pretty good at getting rebounds. Just 
that was what I focused on mostly all through the past three years, and that's what I'm going to stay focused on because just in our conference, it's the offense or the defensive rebounds that really matter because we don't like people getting a lot more second chances and third chances. Um, probably the weakness I'd say is my confidence on offense. I'm not as strong with the ball as I should be, especially being in the post. Um, I just got to be strong with the ball this year and kind of facilitate the offense a lot more. And how about for 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 your team? You know, you look at, the, you know, it's, again, it's just an opinion out of a book, <laughs> but they they you know they predict you to finish second. You finished second last year, and obviously your team does very well in that conference, and you guys play well, and you see always hanging at the top. But you know, everybody wants that coveted goal prize of getting to that first place spot and taking that over. Um, you know, and you, and you have the hopes to do it, and you know your team can do it. What do you think is going to be the biggest maybe factor or that will get you that spot in owning that? Well, um, we actually tied for conference <laughs> last year, but Did you? I mean, sorry, my bad. No, it's all right. Uh, we yeah, we've always been looked down on. Like we were projected to finish like in the middle of the conference last year, and being in the top two was really good for us, really boost. And then again this year, our coach was saying we're projected to finish in the middle of the conference and whatever because we lost like the big talent last year. But uh, I think um, that we're gonna play our hardest, and the people that we got from Wisconsin Valley Lutheran, they're gonna help us. Uh, they want to be here. They want to be at the top two. So I think that's going to be a big factor in us getting there. Do you have a biggest rival? Everybody always has, you know, the games. I mean, it was maybe Wisconsin Valley Lutheran before they closed. But do you have do you have a team you really look forward to playing? Like, you're, I want to show up with my best game this night because that's the team I really want to beat. Or is it just is there not one big rivalry for you? Um, there's not really like a big team rivalry. I guess um, like record wise, it's more Marion because that's the team we were fighting with for the top of conference last year and that's what it'll probably be again this year so probably marion is up there let's talk about your team your teammates uh obviously with your experience uh, you've been around the program for a few years i'm, I'm expecting that you would be uh, somebody that's looked upon both on the court and office uh, a bit of a team leader but who else on your squad do you look at whether it's between the lines or or, or in the locker room or around school that are the leaders for your team they're going to be important for your team's success this year um, I believe Jack Hahn, he's really big. Um, he's our probably our best defender out there. Um, he just moves so fast, and he can get the steals. And he's also a big rebounder. He's not really big, but he can jump. He boxes out. Um, he's pretty big. And then Connor, the one, one of the guys from Valley, he's pretty big too, big on defense, and he'll uh, finish strong to the basket as well. He's also a senior. I want to ask generally again. Uh, we'll get back to, to the basketball. Uh, when we have uh, kids from, uh, I think, with the smaller schools, and I think that there are so many, there are different opportunities that you have at a big school that maybe you have at a smaller school. What makes it work for you at Northern Lutheran? What are the opportunities? Maybe a chance for you to sell folks uh, on Northern Lutheran that what are the best parts of going to school there and what's the best parts of being part of uh, the basketball team? Well, um, being at the school there, you're just um, in God's Word every day. We're a Christian school, so we're just in God's Word every day. We got we get to be with our uh, we get to be around Christian um, leaders in the teachers, and then uh, around Christian friends in the school. Um, on the team, it just we're just focused on being those that team that every everybody in the conference uh, or everybody who we play just compliments on our um, play. And we're just not like gonna be mean to everybody. We're gonna pick each up, pick other teams up as well off the court. If we knock them down, we're gonna be nice to them. We're not gonna like get in their faces, or we're not gonna complain to the refs. We're gonna try to be really sportsmanlike in the conferences and uh, in other games as well. Do you play other sports? Um, yeah, I play also soccer in the fall and baseball in the spring. So. And the reason I ask because it sounds just you know, you got travel time, you balance sports, you balance school. There's family stuff and other things going on. You know, sometimes people say, oh, they're just a high school athlete. But there's a lot of difficulty, I think, that goes involved in balancing that. Do you ever find that, that that can be trying and there's a lot to do it? But, I mean, the rewards can also be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, um, it is for sure a trial. Um, just to sleep, like I said before, getting sleep. Um, sometimes I'm a little bit overtired to go to school. I sometimes fall asleep in classes or study halls. But <laughs> The teachers are listening now. They're, That's they're all, right. all on break. Yeah. They're all... Uh, so... Just, I mean, that's a struggle, but yeah, the benefits are really, really great. Like being around your friends up there, like most of my friends are up here now, so I like to come up here a lot more often anyways. Um, And then like your fi physical benefits and being in three sports, so that's pretty great. And has it been um, a good transition where those, you know, those, some of those lifelong friends, because I know there's different feeder grade schools 
in all into Northern Lutheran, right? Yeah. So have you been pretty consistent with the same kids, or have, they, have you gotten to know different kids through going to high school? Over? For sure gotten to know, because I was the only one really in my class that played sports um, from my grade school to high school. But that freshman year, you just meet your class, you meet everybody else, and you're just like one big family at that point. So you just kind of mold right away when you get there. Again, we're talking to Mitchell Crock from North of Lutheran High School, senior for the boys basketball team here on Bull Falls Radio. What's your favorite class? Oh, uh, Probably calculus. Um, it's pretty good. <laughs> My teacher's really nice there. He's a really good teacher. And as a senior, do you have ideas of continuing your educational career after high school or to even possibly be involved in some sports uh, beyond high school as well? Or, or have you made any thoughts on that? Yeah, I uh, want to go into mechanical engineering, um, uh, probably Michigan Tech or mm. Milwaukee School of Engineering. Um, for sports-wise, I would probably try out for the basketball team at both if I went to one or the other, um, or I would just probably try and become a ref. Because I've heard that that's a pretty good side gig or whatever to be around. <laughs> you can do as many games as you want these days because yeah. they keep on asking for for officials to uh, to do these games. Jeff talked about the the time that's involved in all this, but when you have the opportunity to to get away from either school or sports or whatever, what are the things you like to do? Um, well, it's hunting week, so I I really like hunting up. Um, we've got a cabin up north that's really nice to be around. Um, fishing sometimes with my brother. I do a lot up north too. Um, uh, I help my dad with his car sometimes and just kind of getting out. And I'll jump back to basketball then. What's, uh, uh, you know, what's, um, one of the things you want to see, you know, each year as a player, I think you self-analyze yourself. Uh, what do I want to add to my game? What do I want to create as an individual so I can make my team better by, by doing something? Is there anything you look at that from last year to this year you want to do better, something you want to keep consistent, something you really worked on in the summer? Um, probably driving to the basket more with confidence because when I would do it last year, years before, I would lose the ball more than half the time, and I want to be more strong with the ball and be able to take it all the way to the basket. Real fast before you get, you, he keeps delving into the X's and those. I want to ask one of these, you know, generic questions again. You mentioned you're involved in in soccer, basketball, and uh, in baseball. Nobody's listening. Number one, you know, but we always have to ask for the multi sport athletes. Uh, do you have a favorite sport? Oh, for sure, basketball. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I just started playing soccer when I got to high school, and it's never been my sport. I had to learn everything freshman year, and it just hasn't re- really been my sport. And baseball, I played for a while in grade school. I never could really get a hit, um, <laughs> but I joined again in high school, and then. I became a first baseman. And I really liked it there. I still can't hit really great, <laughs> but I've gotten a little bit better. So, do you feel like your participation in those sports though have made you a better athlete, and they've added to things on the basketball court for you? Oh, for sure. Soccer for sure adds stamina, quickness on your feet, um, stuff like that. Um, baseball, I just, um, yeah, it just adds a lot more character to you as well. And generally, as you said, you kind of joined up in soccer later and in baseball, you had struggles. It can't be easy when you you kind of struggle at the plate from time to time. But being part of something that's bigger than yourself, helping your soccer program, helping your baseball program, and then still being able to be part of the basketball program and get your uh, all-conference achievements as well. But being part of something bigger than yourself, is that a reason why you're involved in these other sports that maybe, again, that uh, not quite at the level of both your love and your maybe your ability that you see during the winter? Uh, yeah, I just like being around my teammates in every sport. That's been my main purpose in all sports I've ever played is just kind of the team aspect of it. I never really liked individual playing. I just always like being a part of a team and that cooperation with each other is just a lot better than you just being on your own and trying to do it all yourself. Before I give you, I'll give you the last good one. I got one more on sports quick, but I'll give you the last good one. Uh, you, you talk about the excitement you have coming up for that first game, getting to the practices, practicing Friday and Saturday, and, and meshing as one team from the different schools. You know, obviously you want the W, but it, in your mind, what, what do you want to, against Alvin Baycroft, what do you guys want to see on Monday that would say, this is time well spent, we did a good job? What would you like to see out of your team? I want to see us come together again. Um, we had a scrimmage on Monday. We didn't really mesh as I thought we were going to on the first scrimmage, but um, just seeing us come together, we lost one of our key offensive players to an injury on mm-hmm. Monday, so that'll be a hit. But um, 
I think if we can mesh our talking on defense and then our transition on offense and run our plays, I think we'll just show up and we'll play to our best and whatever happens, happens. And our uh, final qu- – oh, do you have one no, more? No, you go. I'm good. I'm give- No, I'm pointing to you to, <laughs> okay. pointing to, you to take You it. always look like you want to ask no, more. I and I know you always want to ask Go more. for oh, it. Okay. But we always try to finish up with our student athletes, by, especially the, the seniors, because you've, you've gone through the process. You've gone through a number of years uh, in athletics and in academics. But uh, for if you come across a younger member of, of Northern Lutheran, high school who is getting involved in athletics, maybe just starting as a uh, you know, freshman, sophomore in that general area. What piece of advice would you give? What have you learned over these last few years that uh, you can pass along maybe to a younger teammates to help them on their journey as they head towards where you are right now? Uh, just keep wanting to get better. Always, always when you get the chance, get better at your given sport or all three, if you're playing all three, but for sure, just want to get better every day and do what you can to get better fantastic uh, anything else there Jeff? no we just wish you the best of luck looking forward to see how you do on monday i'm yeah. excited to, to just hearing what you got to share about us and, and you as a person and player excited to see uh, how your guys season go and wish you the best of luck going forward in all your games thank you mitchell crock from northern lutheran high school again second team all conference a year ago tipping off the new season coming up uh, next week we're going to come back look ahead to boys basketball start delving into what we expect here for our area teams coming up next i'm chad holmes along with jeff grass the big high school sports show on bull falls radio 98 9 and 12 30. we are the nfhs that stands for the national federation of state high school associations But really, what we stand for, together with the WIAA, are the 178,000 high school sports students in Wisconsin. And so we stand. We stand for the runners, soccer, and basketball players. We stand for their coaches, administrators, and officials. We stand for the swimmers, football players, and wrestlers. We stand for the golfers, softball, and volleyball players. We stand as the national leader and advocate for high school athletics and all who participate in them and make them possible. Because it is our purpose to ensure that high school students get to play, perform, and compete together. To learn more about who we are and what we stand for, visit nfhs.org. What's your idea of fall fun? Maybe it's hitting the trails on a new ATV. Then it's time to call CCU. That's Clover Belt Credit Union. Or if you're thinking of a UTV for hauling wood or hunting, or maybe just because it would make the tasks around your property so much easier, it's time to call CCU. ATVs, UTVs, utility tractors, and their attachments for care of your property. Whether you need it for fun or to get the job done, Clover Belt Credit Union is here to help with the great rate financing you want. What are you waiting for? Life's too short and winter's too long. Thinking about a motorhome or maybe a snowplow for your ATV or utility tractor? Call CCU for great rate financing. And if you're thinking motorcycle, Clover Belt Credit Union has the financing you need for the bike you want. Call or apply online at ccuwasaw.com. Check it out. For vehicle loans, for mortgages, for financing fall fun, call Clover Belt Credit Union. That's CCU. Local lenders lending local money. Keeping our community strong. And welcome back. Big High School Sports Show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. BullFallsRadio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO and on the Civic Media app. And don't forget as well, that if you miss any part of the program or just want to listen again, we always post it on our website under the show's page or under the sports page. Just click on the Big High School Sports Show logo, and we have our uh, previous episodes all posted there. Also, you can get them wherever you get your podcast. With Jeff Gress, I'm Chad Holmes, and again, uh, yeah, you jump right back in. Three perfect interviews from you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say for me. I said you. You no, you get, no, no. You get the guests. The, no, the, the guests calls. were terrific yeah. again. All I, three of them. Yeah, I love you know Coach DeBoer's different way of looking at the statistical analysis of how the playoffs is going to go out and the insights on his team, how well he knows his girls. You know, Norbert giving us some insight of of future things to come with with you know trying to predict top of these conferences and how well teams are going to do down the stretch. And, and, and Mitchell just painting a picture of his team and how it's coming together. As a, you know, good calls, good quotes, good guests, all good. 
Let's talk about boys high school basketball. You just spent, uh, you know, about 20 minutes talking to uh, Mitchell Crockett about uh, his team and his uh, career himself. Uh, let's talk about uh, the boys basketball. And uh, there was a little bit of action last night, but let's, let's talk generally about the conferences that we usually keep an eye on here in uh, this program from central Wisconsin, uh, starting with the Wisconsin Valley conference. And uh, there's been no action yet in the WVC. It's going to be busy this weekend. Obviously a lot of these teams getting into action, but uh, as you look at the Wisconsin Valley conference going into the season, any thoughts, I, I guess, to start the discussion. Well, you know, most of the people I've talked to, when you you know, there's teams that are going to improve and jump up a little bit. I think, uh, you know, they, they, everybody's saying Spash is still the early favorite uh, with the return of some of the players they have. They're, they're, I know, just you know, looking on uh, online and in the yearbook a little bit, they've got one player back from injury. They've had a transfer in. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be tested right away against Bayport, who's always a good basketball program over on that side of the state. Uh, Marshfield, the job they've done to, 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 to win the conference the last couple of years, the last two years, defending champions. Uh, you know, they got Brooke Hinson back, who's a solid player for them. I look for them to be a top. One of the other teams I, I you know, I'm looking at that's going to, I think it's going to make a big jump just because I've had, because I, you know, I have a relative on the team and I've happened to of catch. Of course, that's because. Well, no, yeah. but I've happened to catch that. You're at the, you're, you're so defensive when I yeah. say anything well, like that. Well, you know, I don't want to play favorites, <laughs> but you know, I, I get to see them during the summer a little bit because I, I go watch some games to support my family and I'm looking forward to seeing what East can do. They got a lot of, they got all, you know, five starters back. They've got a couple of seniors that are, are, are going to be in the mix of the rotation and, and, and a good junior class and I think that uh, that returns a very balanced lineup for them heavy guard play they got a big guy I think uh, uh, that's going to be a big deal I think you're going to see them make some some strides in that conference and and buy for playing at the top of that conference throughout the, the, the year and then I think you you know you can never count out West is always gritty and determined and and defensive minded and you know sometimes their games go as their offense comes and uh, you know, interesting to see you know where where Everest is after after Marcus Hall is gone. You know, because I think they have a good good strong cast of players there as well. And I'm kind of curious, real quickly about Everest. I'm curious because this will be the second year now for Coach Oliver Drake, and he's got a, a no a good resume. I mean, this guy who's been around, I think he came in and did a nice job last year. But now, as it's always when you come in and you have such an established player like Marcus Hall. You try to, I think, probably try to work around that special talent. And now I think we're going to see what Oliver Drake brings to the table. And I think for everything I've heard, a very impressive coach. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how that Everest program develops because Everest from time to time have had you know, good players, but it never really clicked, it feels like, on the boys' side like it could at Everest. I'm kind of curious to see how that goes. Uh, yeah, I think you've painted a really good picture. Like, uh, how are we without Marcus Hall? I mean, because I think Drake is a good coach. I've heard nothing but positives about the, the job he does over at Everest. Uh, returns three starters, yeah. which I think is a big deal. <laughs> yeah. and, and some kids that can put up some numbers. And, you know, Everest, again, has always been kind of, you know, a, a physical, strong team with, with a lot of athleticism. And I think uh, when you could, could you know, I, I've seen things – really happen well too not that you know marcus hall was great for that team he did a good job in that program but i think when it's the next person's turn and and you develop less of the of a an individual focus from people that are watching mm -hmm. or scouting them to more of a couple of players i i think it can turn the tables and and even notch your team up a little farther so and merrill i, I think to see. and merrill i think again it's i i think it's so important to have stability and i think in both their girls and boys coaches you got people there that want to be there and build a program and i think of course troy peeper with his merrill ties is somebody that's trying to build that program again not a lot of size for the merrill blue jays but they're always going to i think maximize what they have yeah he's going to put a, a team out of the floor to, that's going to be competitive i mean that's the way he operates and what he does and he takes pride in being a, in a, an alumni for merrill and i think uh his biggest thing is you know they don't the, the size is, is going to be something they're going to have to overcome as well as i uh, they to graduation they lost three double digit scores yeah. so that that makes a big difference and uh, i think they got to win a few games because then coach peeper can bring up the point that uh mark miller misspelled blue jays in the yearbook uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I noticed yeah. that when I got my book. Yeah, you like, don't want to you know. see your team's name misspelled. And, uh, and a big change at Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, new head coach, uh, uh, Jack Smalley, stepping in for Dan Witter, who did such a you know, such a great job for so many years, first at Newman and then at Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, but it's going to be different now at Wisconsin Rapids. Yeah, the big, you know, I Coach Witter, I, I respect him. He, he was my coach. I, I we, we talked a lot of times, even, you know, over the summer. I saw him, saw him in August a little bit. And uh, I, I just 
for me, it's weird to not see Coach Weirder there because <laughs> you know, he's just always sta- he's always standing on that sidelines. And to me, I'm prideful of that because he used to be my coach, and I I just it's different for me to look at that sidelines and not see him there. And I think for teams. You know, when there's such an established figure like him, who's 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 a, a strong part of Wisconsin athletics as well as the Central Wisconsin area, um, it's just different. So it's it'll be interesting to see how that team reacts, because um, you know, Coach, I know always took a big pride in knowing those kids from the time they were in grade school all the way through and beyond. So I I, I know that that's a different all right uh, level of basketball. Rest top three in the valley. <laughs> uh you know, I I'm gonna. I, yeah, I'm gonna go with what the yearbook. Has. I think it's Spash oh, Mark. I was hoping for some. I, 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 you know, you want to say East first. Come well, on. no, I, I, I never like. You know, I never. I, 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 you the, are just having I'm so much trouble because, when I, well, because I keep pushing. You, you threw here. me a curveball. Um, I guess I'm gonna just no, stand no, out with Spash to begin with. I think just the lineup they had, some of the things they've added with kids back from injuries and, and a transfer. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see what they can do. But I, I, I still think it's wide open. I don't think anything's solidified. I think you're going to see some teams jump up there, and a couple teams have to find their identity. And uh, I guess if you want my top three, I got Spash, Marshfield, and East, but that's what the book okay, says. Okay, okay. So what's your top three? Oh, man. See, well, I, don't, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like predicting. <laughs> okay. I really don't. I'm going to take that road up the next time you do that. <laughs> Feel free, but I'm, right. not, I'm not predicting Okay, go for it. I want to see at least a little action before I make the Well, the that's bolt. my call, and we'll see okay. if it stands. Okay, great Northern Conference. And uh, uh, Mosinee, I think, is expected to be very good. I mean, you got a kid like Keegan Tertiary. Uh, you know, again, a terrific guard, uh, just an outstanding athlete, <laughs> three-sport athlete. Uh, Medford, always tough, but they lost quite a bit this season. Uh, again, I would have a hard time thinking Medford can come all the way back. Uh, you got a change at the top at Lakeland. It's been such a stable coaching position for decades between two coaches uh, at uh, Lakeland and now uh, moving from Tomahawk uh, Jacob Jarvenciu arrives and uh, you got Rhinelander who got a little bit of talent back for the whole days. Northern Pines boy it was quite a run for Northern Pines mm-hmm. over the last few years uh, they opened their season last night and they lost the three lakes 47-41 so obviously it's going to be a rebuilding project for Pines but uh, any any thoughts on the GNC? Well, you know, Pines is, is hopefully that some of that tradition carries forth, but they're obviously a lot of different teams when you lose those key cogs and in that talented senior class that they had last year, and they've already suffered one loss, and and uh, then they're jumping in the tournament over Thanksgiving down here in Wausau. Uh, Lakeland, all starters were gone, new coach. That can be good and bad. That can change things up a little bit. And uh, I, I, I think Ryan Lander will jump back into the mix mm-hmm. of things a little bit. Coach uh, Lemons up there always – gets those kids ready and, and again that, stability i think yeah. it's so important at the high school level these yep. days because we see such little of it uh, like we then we used to yep and he has three uh uh three starters coming back i uh, this is my gut coach brown has done a great job at medford and <laughs> yes, i know he, he lost a lot with four starters but he has one of them back and i'm gonna see I, I just from what i've seen in their in their grade school program now coaching in the youth program at newman when we played medford there's a lot of good things mm. happening there, and I, I think they might reload a little bit more than people think and, and buy for challenging for that conference to get Mosini, who's the who's the early favorite, even though they have to replace Stoffel. Yeah, but this year, I think, and again, not to put any pressure on Coach Lindsay, but this seems like the kind of year Mosini has the chips to play. Don't don't you agree? Yeah, they have a, that, they have a not, talented not, roster not back. Not only to a be, uh, yeah, not only to be a, well, a good team in the regular season, but I think a team that could be good when we get past that right and i think that's where they want to head they want to get out of that playoff area a little bit more make a little farther advancement down the road than they have in years past and i think uh you'll see something out of the gates right away because they're going to challenge themselves new london on on the 24th here on friday Merrillwood south i i mean there's one of the players in this area that we're going to keep an eye on is grant warren for marathon uh, think about the raiders though and I imagine that this is a team, and I, I, I'm not a big fan of the old chip on the shoulder, but the way their season ended last year, that loss to Auburndale in the playoffs, has to be something that lit a fire over the uh, over this veteran marathon group. Well, and and you know now things are out of the way. You can focus on you know Grant Warren knows where he's going to school. He's he, he's made the that decision, and and there's you know Underwood and um, um, 
Huckstra, what's the other? Oh yeah, Huxama. Uh, Huxama. You know, you got, was, a good, you got a good. You got a good. Those two were there. here together just a few weeks ago. Yeah. You obviously don't listen yeah. during the fall. Well, I do. I, I just <laughs> couldn't pronounce his name. I, mean, I would, even if I would have listened, I wouldn't have pronounced oh. it right. But what I'm saying is, you know, Marathon is the heavy odds favorite from some of the the Marathon coaches that I still keep in contact with. That's the the team they're tossing out there. So as much as you got a target on your back, and they won the conference last year when it was still loaded with Newman at the top and Auburn and Stratford. But those teams are going to be hanging around. And I think some of those, I mean, you had a bunch of teams again that had, had 20 win seasons last year. <laughs> three three out of the top four again at 20 win seasons. And that's pretty much how the Merrillwood goes. So Auburndale, Stratford, I think they're all, you know, going to get a little better too and, and, and challenge for that. You saw what happened last year with Marathon just rolling and doing well. Auburndale came and, <laughs> and got another one out just because they're all well coached. What about uh, your neck of the woods, uh what a what a finish last season for Newman yep. Catholic. They were able to put it together and earn a state championship. All the starters uh, have gone. Yep. Big big task for Newman this year, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's going to be about you know I've, I've used this slogan too many times tonight, but about creating that identity. What, who are you guys? You know, you got to figure out. You know, it's one thing to say, yeah, we were part of a state championship team, but now that moment has kind of come and gone. You ha- I mean, you have that for your life that you can quote, quote and comment on it, but until you're in another one, that's all it was. So I think for Newman, you know, you, they lost their entire rotation. They're younger, and some of the key guys they're going to rely on are only sophomores, and I, I think they're going to have to, they're going to take some time to grow. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, along that way, there's going to be some highs and lows, some inconsistencies. Um, but, you know, every time you talk to Coach Wogglewell, he has his plan. He, he knows where things are going and uh, what he wants to accomplish with these guys. But half of it is overcoming that youth. That can take some time. Central Wisconsin North, we just spent some time uh, uh, again with uh, one of the top performers from Northern Lutheran, uh, Mitchell Crockett, who is a second-team all-conference performer. We spoke. Uh, he spoke about Marion being that team right at the top. It looks like they're going to be good. It looks like Northern has the potential of being good. It did sound like, again, there are some question marks. And, Again, there's the positives of getting some players from Wisconsin Valley Lutheran, but again, it takes time to integrate. I mean, it's not easy. I mean, we see at the pro levels where you get a talented free agent, you think, boy, we're much better. But that, again, chemistry, you can't underestimate, can you? Well, no, it's it's like having two new kids come out. Maybe they've had a little more basketball talent because they played at the other level, but you got to merge systems. You got to get them in all your strategies, and it's not like they've been doing this throughout their whole high school career. So it takes. So I'm interested to see when when we look at the scores and stuff how they're going to do against Almond in that first game, because there's a little adversity to come over. Especially I I just I'm I'm floor, or fathom that uh, uh, they they go from being big rivalries Wisconsin Valley Luther Northern and now their teammates on the same court. I think that says a lot about the kids though because he said we're you know it's like they were there from day one, mm-hmm. which is a big deal on their personalities and their leadership. But you know some unanswered questions that way with trying to to build that plus you know they've already talked about key features where guys go down guys get sick how are we going to handle that he said he had a key, they had a key injury to one of their main offensive players next guy's got to step up and how well they can fill that void is a big deal going forward and uh central wisconsin east it looks like like the girls the boys for Whitburn burnham would have an opportunity to uh, do some good things and the thing about Whitburn, <laughs> you see these names you see names on the girls you see names on the boys you see uh, rogowski on the boys side yep. uh, the coach rogowski the who happens to be the uh girls. the superintendent yes. isn't he yeah yep. so it's like uh you got the uh, salveson who's the outstanding sophomore girl you got a senior boy that's expected to be one of their top performers and you got a couple of phrases who's seem to be there all the time as well but uh this cwc east is always very interesting if you look at last year you know yeah she acted 11 and 3 nobody else nine and better than nine and five but i mean you go from uh, the only team at the bottom iola who did not win a game second to last won six conference games you don't see that very often in right. a big conference you had eight teams in that conference and they were knocking each other off all the time and that tends to be the case uh, with teams like Bonduel and Wyoming and Shyocton and Amherst. These are all very evenly matched programs. Again, I use that term programs as opposed to teams. Right. And it's, it's constant. It's, it's from top to bottom. It's, it's a war, which is what you want within your conference on any given night. Because number one, your players can't, they can't take a night off. You can't say, well, we're going to play the last place team. No, we're going to play this team that has this many wins, and they're going to come in and give you a fight just like we're playing the second place team that we're trying to kick off our, our backs here. So I, I think it's a big deal when the conference wails on each other like that. That pattern that you described is exactly what you see. Um, you know, it's going to be who can find that consistent play. And I think uh, that's what Wittenberg's, uh, you know, 
is setting up to do with with the strong guard play they have. I, I don't know if there's I don't think they're as big maybe as they they've been over the years, but that guard play and and you know they're going to come out and try to rectify that record a little bit, which was under 500 last season. And quickly, Merrillwood North, I didn't mention, because Athens, just down the road here from Wausau, they had a great year a year ago, won the conference championship by six games over second-place Prentice, but they uh, lost quite a bit. In fact, uh, they lost first-team all-conference performers, Aiden Yankee, Connor Sheehan. Uh, it's going to be, uh, according to the yearbook, it looks like Rib Lake has uh, uh, experience back. But, again, Athens had a group there that had been very good for a couple of years and obviously some question marks after that. Yeah, they were very I, – I don't know how deep their rotation went. I know they had some youth coming off the bench with some freshmen that were playing that are now sophomores uh, in that lineup. So they'll have some youth back in their starting lineup. But, again, it's hard when you have a, a core uh, – you know, you have your center for years. You have your your, your strong guards with that leadership and, and ability to handle the ball and calm things down. And, and that's what Athens had, which made them, made them that, that, that strong class they had go through that made them a, a, a viable challenger in the program, not only in the north but also in the south. And I think that might be down a little bit, but I, I still wouldn't count them out because when those things go through and you can get the athletes back and those kids see what the kids did before them – it'll cycle itself through a little bit that they want to prove themselves. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where they fall since, you know, they're not picked to be top, but they're obviously picked to hang up there. So I think they'll they'll be vying for that conference, you know, give, give it on a given night with Rib Lake. Absolutely. So we got to take a break. We're going to look ahead as now everybody getting into the, into the rhythm, whether it's boys basketball, girls basketball, hockey, it's all going to be really going starting this weekend. A lot of activity going on. In fact, I could be doing five games yeah. between Friday and Saturday. That shows how busy. Yeah, so it's, tune back it's in if be. you love the sound of Chad's voice because he's going to be on nonstop. Uh, you better tune in because I may not have a voice by the end of all that. <laughs> but we're going to look ahead at some of the matchups in the next week that we should keep an eye on as we continue. Along with Jeff Grass, I'm Chad Holmes. Big high school sports show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 1230. Fall sports are here. Align your young athletes and yourself with health by scheduling an appointment with Dr. Sarah at Shine Chiropractic in Rim Mountain. Stay in the game with our comprehensive three-point neurological exam. Safe for the entire family. Don't let the daily grind keep you and your student athletes on the sidelines this year. Call Dr. Sarah at 715-298-5104. That's 715-298-5104 in Rim Mountain today. Hungry for flavor-packed fun? Dive into Red Robin's sizzling burgers, mouth-watering fries, and endless options. Or maybe you're craving the perfect slice. Then it's Donato's Pizza, your passport to pizza perfection. Order now and treat yourself to an unforgettable taste experience. Red Robin and Donato's Pizza, 225548 Rib Mountain Drive in Wausau. Call 715-301-0019 or log on redrobin.com. Red Robin and Donato's Pizza. Yum. If you're looking for your next ride, check out Mankey GMC in Schofield. Formerly Fred Miller Automotive, Mankey GMC serves Schofield, Wausau, Marshfield, and Stevens Point with a huge selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. Explore a range of top-notch SUVs like Acadia, Terrain, and Yukon, or choose from the rugged Sierra truck lineup, or even a certified pre-owned vehicle. No matter your dream, your dream vehicle awaits at Mankey GMC, 448 Grand Avenue in Schofield, and online at MankeyAuto.com. Mankey GMC in Schofield, where your journey begins. Begins. Take your career to the next level with Graphic Packaging International. Work with a team to make Hot Pocket sleeves and the food trays you find at our local fair. Join the GPI team and experience the benefits of one of the highest paying manufacturers in the area, starting at almost $22.55 per hour. Enjoy job security, a clean facility, and an excellent benefits package, including a week of vacation after four months and two weeks after a year. Apply today at graphicpkg.com and elevate your career with graphic packaging. And welcome back. Big high school sports show on Bull Falls Radio, 98.9 and 12.30. BullFallsRadio.com, mobile devices, and Alexa by searching WXCO. Along with Jeff Gress, I'm Chad Holmes. Let's look ahead. Boy, I mean, we got this last segment. We got a lot to get through in this last <laughs> segment. But let's start with Go the boys it. because we have, uh, again, busyness because there's a lot of tournaments going on. If you're a basketball fan here in Wausau's area, between D.C. Everest, Wausau, East, and Wausau West, 
you will get as much as you can possibly get and then some. Because literally at Everest, I think you get eight games if you just sit there in that field house from 9 a.m. until about 10 p.m. Of course, you got the east uh, has double headers, west has the turkey shoot, lots going on. And some teams just have a random one non-conference game built in so their team gets a little action. But I think if you can get out to any of those games and, and support our local high school athletes, it's a big deal. Let's talk about the turkey shoot at Wausau West first. You got uh, Newman Catholic against North and Pines. And you got Wausau West against Crandon. That was our semifinals Friday. Um, I'm doing hockey Friday night. I'll do the boys basketball, both games with Newman and West on Saturday. But uh, I think for Wausau West, looking at those teams, Warriors need two wins, in my opinion. Put the pressure on right away. <laughs> yep. Well, I, I think, yeah, you want to see what this year's teams uh, it comes out at, who they kind of become those nights. I think uh, – a 2-0 start is right what Coach Lemons wants. I Again, I, I've just seen West over the years too many times. They're, they're going to have a grittiness, a finesse on the defensive side, and I think sometimes their biggest question mark is who's going to step up and put the ball in, in the hole consistently, and, and we've seen it over the years when, when somebody gets a little cold that has been their consistent score, who's popping up next? And I think to, to drive home that offensive side of the basketball is going to be a big deal for them, but th those are two winnable games. And Pines West. and Newman, that was one of the great games last season, that uh, first game at the turkey shoot where Newman hit a triple at the end, uh, Seidel, right? Yeah. yeah, Seidel hit the triple to win it. Uh, two really experienced teams a year ago, two very experienced teams this year. That's going to be an interesting game. I, right there is what you, it's youthful. I mean, both those teams have lineups that they've had these strong senior classes where the whole lineup was – all those guys and they're graduated and gone and and again you know what was established last year is no longer this year so i think that's a crucial game for both of them to kind of show who they are mm -hmm. they both should want that game really bad who, who's going to pull it out there's just both a lot of question marks on both teams due to the inexperience so i i think it's going to be should be a war that <laughs> night in that game fun one to watch dc everest is part of the kislow tournament over at uh, their field house most of it is girls a lot of girls basketball but then both friday evening and saturday evening the evergreen boys in action friday against superior Saturday against Eau Claire North. I mean, obviously, those are nice matchups against uh, similarly sized teams, Division One opponents, uh, good night conference games uh, for Coach Drake to start things off with. Yeah, I, I think it's the right way heading into the season to uh, kind of establish, you know, the the, the next the season without Marcus Hall. And, and, and then they go to a flopping on Monday yeah. to a very busy few days. Yeah, I think these are going to be good games to to showcase themselves as, as a little bit different looking team because there's there's more players that are going to take on these leadership roles, these scoring duties because you've lost such a heavy punch in, in the one player that you had. And I and, and looking to kind of spread their wings and shine a little bit. So I think uh, early on, Superior and Oakland North are good games forever. So. And then Wasa East has a couple of games uh, at home uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, taking on Elko on Friday. And then uh, Wassa East takes on Three Lakes on Saturday. Three Lakes beat uh, Northern Pines last night in their opener. But for the Lumberjacks, it, it, as you've talked about, uh, expected to be, I think, uh, in the top half of the WVC, hoping to uh, make some noise. Uh, these are two winnable games. Yeah, I, you know, for me, I, I, I mean, that's one of the couple games I'm going to go watch. And I think, uh, you know, I'm just looking for the guard play between, you know, uh, Roswodowski, uh, Nate Gezik, Garrett, and then the, the other key cogs they have with Kaylee and, and, and the other, other starters they might have in that lineup is to uh, go establish themselves. Go, you know, go own it on the defensive end. Go make your offense pour in because they got a lot of different weapons there. And uh, see how consistent they can stay against those two teams because I think they're a little bit level up. And you just want to see the sloppy play not come into play uh, when, when when you're playing teams that are a little bit different in divisions. So those are some of the big games as well. But uh, a number of the other Valley teams in action, uh, uh, Nina and Spash, I think, on Tuesday is going to be a good one. That's always a, an interesting game. Um Anything else within these Valley schools that you're going to keep an eye on? Or uh, move on? Is, is the Spash play Bayport on the 25th? Spash plays Bayport on Saturday. You're yeah. exactly right. So, so, I think, so they got Nina and Bayport the next uh, week. Yeah, I think those are going to be some determining games to see where Spash kind of lines up and where, where they where they settle when they play some teams over on the east eastern half of the state. Uh, you know, uh, not much else going on because most of the teams are after after the uh, holiday break. So I guess just looking to see where those tournament games play out between our, our local teams of, of Newman East and, and West and Everest. Great Northern. Now, Mosani has games on Friday and Saturday. They take on Ma uh, Milwaukee Madison Friday at home. 
and then they take on New London on Saturday at home. So again, uh, an opportunity to see uh, Mosinee against uh, different areas of the state. They played New London often in the postseason, so that's going to be an interesting one on Saturday. I think that's a great scheduling choice. Uh, number one, because it's early on, so it's far enough away from the next time you play them, but these two teams have gone at each other a lot, like you said, uh, in, in the regionals. And a lot of times, I think Mosinee's got a little chip on their shoulder because New London is is, is beaten them the last couple times so I think uh, that's a good opening kind of one hit game to go put your effort forth right over Thanksgiving to see what see where you're at and uh, it looks like you know the rest of the teams other than Pines are, are pretty dormant because Pines will go over to West and see where they stand. Merrowood South uh, boys we mentioned Newman Catholic at the West Turkey shoot Friday and Saturday uh, the annual Cranberry Classic going on uh, in Wisconsin Rapids. Assumption takes on their rival friends in the neighborhood, Port Edwards, on Friday. And then TBD, usually Marshville, Columbus is part of that. I'm not sure who Possibly the, Pittsville some years. Oh, I couldn't find the fourth yeah. team. I tried to look for it. So Assumption getting their seasons underway. Then other teams from the Merrillwood South start after the holiday weekend. You got Edgar playing at Owen Withy in a non-conference game Monday. Uh, we'll see the Marathon Red Raiders for the first time on Tuesday at Spencer. You've got uh, Auburndale hosting Colby coming up Tuesday, and Nielsville is at Stratford, and that's always an interesting matchup. Nielsville always a solid program, and I think Stratford looking to bounce back, and I think they have reason to be optimistic uh, that they'll have a good year this season. Well, and if you looked at one of the things that the yearbook mentioned, their JV was 21-0. I I saw so that, if you yeah. want to have a, a a productive thing coming from your younger programs, your older programs, go undefeated. It sends a little bit of a message to the rest of the teams in your conference when those players get up to that level and, and give some high hopes of, of what they're able to attain. So uh, different philosophies and stuff. Sometimes, you know, it's a big deal to have, a, have games over the holidays and other teams we've seen just as much success where they kind of bide their time with practice and hit heavy right after Thanksgiving. So we'll see. Uh, you know how those teams, those games go forth uh, as, as the season progresses. Merrillwood uh, North, Abbotsford starts at Kadat, Athens home against Loyal, Pines at Rib Lake, Princess at Flambeau get non-conference games. Uh, we mentioned in the CWC North, the Northern Lutheran starts their season off Monday at Elman Bancroft and CWC East Boys, so Whitburn, is uh, taking on Antigo at home Monday, and then they're right back at it at Pulaski on Tuesday. So uh, any other boys matchups that uh, kind of jump out or anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, just interested to see with some of these smaller conferences, the Merrillwood and those CW North and, and CW East, how they, uh, or more so the North and the East, but how, how, how they're going to start off once they start hitting those early conference games because that's going to pop right around the corner because we always have to wait for the Valley for a little while. And girls basketball, if you want to become an expert on girls high school basketball, just sit at D.C. Everest uh, <laughs> Friday and Saturday starting at 9 a.m. because they have, I think, five varsity games, if I'm not mistaken, each of those days. I'll be at Everest uh, on Friday when Wausau West takes on Newman Catholic. Uh, both schools uh, looking for their first win under new head coaches. Uh, we'll have that game 2 o'clock on Friday for the pregame, 2.15 for the tip. Black Friday afternoon action. <laughs> Love it uh, here on Bull Falls so Radio. So skip shopping and get over and listen. There you go. Or just you know, put on the earplug, you know. Yeah. You can walk around and shop as well. But at, at that uh, Kislow on Friday, you got Wassa East against Gresham at 9. You got Wassa West against Newman Catholic at 2.15. You have D.C. Everest against Regis at 4 o'clock. Spash is involved in the Brookfield Central Thanksgiving shootout uh, Friday against Kettle Moraine Lutheran. And then these teams also in action in their respective attorneys on Saturday. West takes on Mosinee, uh, I think an interesting game at 10.45 a.m. Saturday. Uh, East and Newman. So Newman gets West on Friday, and then it's East on Saturday at 4. Everest against Rhinelander Saturday. That's, a, I think, another interesting non-conference game. And then Spash has Mc Milwaukee Academy of Science. And I, they were at State, weren't they? I remember. Yeah. yeah. So Spash, again, in that the Brookfield Central Thanksgiving shootout. And then next Tuesday, East against New London. Merrill against Shawano. Again, we heard that would be an interesting non-conference game. And Marshfield against Baraboo. But these Valley girls teams get a lot of action, much of it at D.C. Everest this weekend. Well, and just for them, stepping out into these teams that are from different areas of the state and, and, and seeing some of that and building their non-conference resume um, in order to get ready for Valley play when that pops up. As far as kind of the local teams, I mean, it's kind of neat to see it all come back where Newman's playing East and they're playing West. And I think the the, the makeup of, of the storyline of, you know, new coaches, new programs trying to establish, you know, what, what Newman is and what West is, I think that that's going to be kind of cool to see how that plays out. And for East, I think sitting in the realm of playing some of these smaller schools to 
look at possibly getting a W. Um, it can hopefully build some confidence for them. Great Northern Conference. You mentioned Mosani. They get to play for Friday and Saturday at the Kislo, but then there's a huge conference game Tuesday. The same thing as last year. Remember that? Yep. Started off the conference campaign, the top two teams, Lakeland at Mosani on Tuesday night. Massive game. I mean, in terms of who ultimately wins that conference championship, it could be decided here in the month of November. Well, and what's hard about that is, you, you know, you got so many games leading into it, but you know that one's on the, the the players, the coach, everybody, the families, all the whole program knows that's on the docket coming up. So you look to build yourselves in these con- in these non conference games over the the, the the turkey shoot and 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 the Thanksgiving tournaments that you have, where you're not injured, you're coming out with no sickness, and everybody's on the same page because that that's a big game and and. It's neat in the sense that it can be have some breaking rights right away. It makes that next game, if everybody can play well down the stretch, more important. And especially important for Mosley because it's the home game. Yes. You don't want to lose the home game. The and, home game you always want. And, and, that, uh, and again, you got to find a way to slow down Christina Wamet. But again, Mosley's got uh, good guard play. You got the, the Dursley girl, Talon, and also some balance. So again, they've proven they can score. That has, again, when you expect it to be high scoring, then it turns out to be low scoring. Yeah. But, but boy, you got some offensive firepower. That looks like it'll be a fun game on Tuesday. And Lakeland has, has a solid supporting cast and some height. So yeah, it's going to be. It's going to so. be the tale of two different teams running to the best <laughs> of their players' abilities. Absolutely. Merrillwood South, again, interesting how the Merrillwood South already has so much conference activity done. You know, a couple of big wins for, for the Assumption Royals. Uh, I think a good start because um, Auburndale was supposed to play Stratford last uh, Thursday, but because Stratford was right. in the state football, they they postponed that. So uh, both Auburndale and Stratford one and zero to start things off. Uh, now they get into some non-conference. Mentioned the fact that Newman has uh, West and East uh, Friday and Saturday respectively. Assumption will be part of that Cranberry Classic against Nakusa. Uh, on Friday, then to be determined on uh, Saturday. And then non-conference games next week. Edgar travels to Spencer, Stratford at Poinette, Auburndale at Columbus Catholic, and Whitburn at Marathon. So, uh, again, it's almost like a, a deep breath after you had that, that big start in the conference with two conference games so quickly. Yep. Now these teams, I think... It's an odd schedule because now it's like now they get a chance to kind of work their teams to get ready for the next push of conference games. Right. It's definitely it can go both. It can go good and bad both ways because you you get that little layoff. And if you've gained some momentum, you don't want a ton of layoff. You want to keep rolling your games, just tweaking things. But if you you know, if you're struggling and you need to really refine some things, you can get the practice time back in. So it, it, it goes both ways. I'm curious a little bit to see how. Marathon can pop back and it would go against Wittenberg. What can what are they able to yeah. do on Tuesday versus them? And uh, CWC North wanted well, to mention that North and Lutheran gets their season underway at Rochelle next Tuesday. So we'll start to find out a little bit more about the uh, North and Lutheran squad. And before we wrap it up, well, we got about three, four minutes to go. We have to talk a little hockey. We have to talk some hockey because a great uh, start to the season uh, this weekend. It's always fun for me because I always go to Eau Claire because that's a fantastic tournament that features Wausau West, Eau Claire Memorial, Notre Dame Academy, defending state champs, and Superior. And on Friday night, uh, Wausau West against Eau Claire Memorial, semifinal. Uh, We will have the game. I'll be heading right from the girls and heading hopefully not too many overtimes because or else I might be in trouble. But uh, 6.15 airtime from Hobbs, Warriors, and Eau Claire Memorial. Then they'll face off against either Notre Dame Academy or Superior coming up on Saturday, either at 11 a.m. or 1 p.m. But, uh, again, what a way to jump in. And We had Coach Brandt on last week. They always start off with these very difficult games. Yeah, they do, there, there's no rest for the West program. You can just tell that, you know, they want to get their season underway and they want to challenge themselves right away. To, and I, I think that's a good philosophy to see how you're doing. And also a big conference game next Tuesday because they go right into the conference next Tuesday at Wisconsin Rapids. They have been really tough on the Warriors in recent years. So in Rapids, expected to be, I think, a very high-scoring team, a, very, uh, a team that could try to – Bump their way in against Stevens Point of Wisconsin, uh, Stevens Point of Wausau West. So West and Rap is next Tuesday. All three of those hockey games uh, featuring Wausau West will be broadcast right here on Bow Falls Radio. And also wanted to mention as well that the Central Wisconsin Storm, they are getting their season underway. They have the uh, the Gobbler Cup. I wonder why that's named the Gobbler yeah. Cup, right? You know. yeah, I'm good. I can do that one. In, in, in Mosinee, and the Storm take on the ECA Stars, Eau Claire Altoona. 
on Friday, and they'll take on either Hayward or University School. And we had uh, one of the Storm players on last week, and she was looking forward to getting a crack at Hayward, who knocked them out of the playoffs last year. So they all they all know what's going Always on. Always a little here. vengeance game is a good game to have right away. Exactly. So uh, again, it's uh, it's going to be just an incredibly busy Thanksgiving weekend, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of sports. So again, you know, one of the most special things is about high school sports. These kids come out there, they balance their schedules, they give their time, they try to take pride in their their teams and their programs. And I think it's a big deal that people go out and support them. Absolutely. So I know you're going to be seeing some of the action at East this weekend. So I'll be at East, West, and probably Everest. So you'll be able to I'll be at all three. You'll of those break schools. it all down for us next Wednesday. Yeah, I right? will. I will try to have some knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's perfect. Hey, we want to thank our guest again tonight, uh, Mike DeBoer from Merrill. Norbert Durst from Wisports.net and Mitchell Crock from uh, North and Lutheran are our guests. And again, if you missed any part of the show uh, coming up here in just a few minutes, I'll be posting it at uh, bullfallsradio.com slash sports. Click on Big High School Sports Show or by wherever you get your podcast. It uh, put out as a podcast as well. So, well, are you back into the midseason form now? I feel good after two hours. Yeah, <laughs> my voice lasted and we, we covered a lot of stuff. So hey, and, uh, awesome say, show. Say thank you to your, your friends who are waiting for you right now <laughs> they can, they can, yeah they're on my time so we'll be okay but hopefully everybody out there listening has a great thanksgiving and get out and watch some little exactly. sports exactly so yeah, get out there support these student athletes and uh, tune in again next week uh, we'll be back from 6 to 8 p.m next uh, wednesday night for another edition of the big high school sports show on bull falls radio 98 9 and 12 30 bullfallsradio.com mobile devices and alexa by searching wxco and on the civic media app WXCO 1230 AM, W255DN Wausau, streaming at bullfallsradio.com.